And we are live. What's up, guys? We got Matt Cross from the 33 Secrets joining us for a special live Q&A. So, uh, Matt, for anyone who's not familiar with you, you want to give a quick 30-second background, who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I run a channel on YouTube called The 33 Secrets to Dating Beautiful Women, where I teach guys cold approach pickup and dating, uh, as well as relationship management, LTRs, uh, probably one of the very few pickup channels that goes beyond just the cold approach and actually talks about what to do after the cold approach if you want to keep the girl around and how to manage those relationships, how to juggle, how to juggle relationships and uh, how to do all that other stuff. So uh, teach pickup and dating relationships and also go deep into female nature. Some guys call that the red pill. I just call it the reality of female nature. But uh, again, one of the very few pickup channels that does that, whereas most POA channels usually is focused on the cold approach and having sex with a girl and then moving on to the next target. Whereas I go a little bit deeper and a little bit more beyond that just because the game's changed so much. And, you know, the old school type pickup, uh, like mystery method type pickup no longer works. And now we're in 2021. So uh, we have to evolve. Well, you and I have that in common because also on this channel, I do a lot of that. You know, I have my booty call on. We talk about what makes a successful uh, you know, relationship and all that stuff. So it's definitely another thing we try to do on here as well. Um, and, yeah, I do agree that a lot of the um, old school pickup concepts have been dated. Like, for example, Mystery still advocates getting the girl's Skype number. Like Skype was a big thing 15, 20 years ago. But a lot of these like young chicks, they don't even know what the fuck Skype is, nor do they have yeah. it on their phone. So you do have to evolve with the times like. You can't, you know, yeah, 20 years ago, you could get by without texting. Now you have to text if, unless you want to be a social pariah. Uh, so we were kind of talking about this offline is that I want to give you props for coming on because a lot of the quote unquote red pill guys, uh, they don't want to come on. I've talked about this in the past. Like they, I almost think that uh, the black pill guys sometimes have more balls than the red pill guys because the black pill guys, at least they will come on and they'll debate me uh, or at least, you know, some of them will. Versus the red pill guys, they just kind of want to stay in their own little niche and they don't want to, you know, just call guys simps who disagree with them and that's it. So uh, I yeah, applaud you. Yeah. They that's don't good. really reach out to me either. Those guys don't really connect with me. They don't do any networking with me. Um, you know, they don't promote me. And that's fine, too, because I, I don't really want to be part of any, like, particular faction. Because at the end of the day, I'm, I mean, at the end, end of the day, I'm pretty honest. I'm a pickup artist and I've been doing the game pretty much my entire adult life. So anything that I teach guys is based on female nature, which today has been known as, has become known as the red pill, uh, is just real, the reality of female nature, pretty much the way it's always been. Uh, but a lot of guys kind of want to glom onto a certain faction so they could kind of feel like they could take pride in something. But I always tell guys it's best to have a balance of all beliefs and not just be set on like one, like, oh, I'm only black pill or I'm only red pill or I'm only purple pill. You know, because I'm sure you get the same kind of shit that I do where guys call me out and they're like, no, well, you still date women. That doesn't count. And it's like, you know, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> there's a team where you have to not date women in order to be part of that team. That's not a team I want to be part of. Right. Right. And it's like, dude, you can date women while understanding female nature and what they're capable of. It's just like, you know, I mean, it's just like having a burrito every once in a while. You know, it's not, you know, it's probably not the most optimal food for you, but it just adds to the spice of life. It just makes life a little sweeter. It keeps your imagination alive. You know, you can't just eat like, you know, like healthy, like no carb, like go straight keto for, you know, like 24 seven. I mean, that's- Yeah, I mean, I would argue that sitting home and jerking off and talking about, you know, the red pill realities on Reddit with other guys is not the equivalent of uh, eating healthy. That's more of like eating the burrito and going out having a normal sex and dating life. That's the equivalent of eating healthy in this analogy. Uh, but that's interesting. I do agree with you that it's important to think for yourself and not be tied to a faction. Um, and I think the red pill community is pretty diverse. So there's some people who are in the red pill community who identify as red pill, who believe things are totally different than other people. So it's the equivalent of like, let's take the, uh, re you know, Republican party. You got guys like, you know, uh, you know, whatever, like, uh, all the, like liber like, like Rand Paul and then you got Donald Trump. They're part of the same party, but they have almost nothing in common. Right. So, it, it, it's a pretty loosely defined thing. Uh, I think it's important to acknowledge that. But let's start with this. How did you get into this whole thing? Like, how did you get into a uh, game? How did you get into creating a YouTube channel and just all of that? 
Okay. Well, so when it started, uh, the way I got into pickup specifically was kind of by accident. Uh, I was 17 at the time and there was a, like a really popular nightclub in San Francisco where I was born and raised it's called the Palladium. It's not there anymore, but it's off Broadway down by where the Condor is you guys who are familiar with San Francisco, but it was like the biggest, baddest and most popular nightclub in San Francisco. And I remember, I was like 17 years old and I really want to get in this club. Anytime I drove by, there's always hot girls outside. And I remember they would like broadcast live on the radio from the Palladium. I think it was like 105.3 KITS. People are familiar who grew up back in uh, San Francisco back then. Uh, so I want to get in this club. And so I created a fake ID at home at my parents' house. And uh, back then we had paper IDs. So it wasn't the credit card style that it's really hard to fake these days. Back then we had these paper IDs and I was able to kind of just like take my buddy's ID and photocopy it and put my photo on top of it and then laminate it. And then it's funny because I did that at college too. See, yeah, yeah. Back then that worked, right? And so I was able to start going to the Palladium and um, it was just like, I don't know, it was just weird for being 17. I felt like I was at home. I loved being there. Uh, they were open Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday nights, and I would go every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday night. And back then, I didn't really have any concept of what I was doing. Um, I, I wasn't worried about rejection. I was just, I just felt like I was already winning because I was in the club and I wasn't supposed to be there. Um, so much so, I don't even remember being rejected back then. I'm sure I was, but I don't even have any recollection of anybody blowing me out. I was just like so busy having a good time. And so the more I went, the more I went clubbing and everything, I started to develop a process for talking to girls, for picking them up and basically, yeah, making them my girlfriends and whatnot. And so that's where I started cutting my teeth on game. And, uh, you know, from that point on, it was like I was constantly doing cold approach pickup. And really my main driving point was I was trying to get married. So that was my motivation was I was trying to get the, the best looking, hottest and coolest girl that I possibly could because my parents who are still married to this day, I wanted to duplicate their success. And I was like, I want to, I want a wife like my mom, you know, we all were kind of like looking for like our moms out there. So, um, so yeah, so that's how I got involved in it. And uh, throughout the nineties, I was constantly doing cold approach, but I mean, I would get into these relationships and they would fail. So I was able to get the girls I wanted, but the relationships would fail because I didn't, I was still very blue pill, at least as far as relationships went, even though I was really pretty skilled at pickup, cold approach. Um, I was missing a lot of those like elements in my, in my uh, relationship game. And this is why I make it a part of what I teach on the 33 secrets, because I know a lot of guys are in my situation. Uh, a lot of guys who come to my channel are really not just looking to like bang girls and move on. They're actually looking for uh, for uh, something deeper than that. They want to have families. They want to be fathers and stuff like that. So uh, I tend to get a lot of those guys these days just because I guess I, I'm getting older. So um, I'm not getting as many of the younger kids who just want to bang and clang anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, my goal has always been to give guys the tools to be able to have what they want, whether that's a one night stand, a booty call, a girlfriend, a wife. I don't think there's a right or wrong. I just think that it's up to what you want. And, you know, as long as you're honest with yourself and, and all of that. Uh, but okay, so were you, at this point when you were going out to the club, did you know you were doing cold on cold, cold approach pickup or were you just like, just doing, did you know about the seduction community? Um, no. Okay. So the, the, back then, cause I'm a bit older, um, we barely had internet. So there was the pickup That's community. Okay, yeah. I forgot. yeah, there was no pickup community. <laughs> and I mean, I remember I was just going out there many times just going solo by myself because nobody wanted to come with me and I didn't want to go with them. Um, and usually when I was out with my friends and we're at clubs, they would just like be running for cover, like, oh my gosh, you know, like he's going to go talk to a girl. And it was just very, back then it was just not something you did. Like it was weird to just walk up to a girl and start talking to her. But back then it was also so easy to just like, if you got a girl's number back in the day, there was at least a 50% chance you'd go on a date with that girl, probably have sex with her and probably even make her your girlfriend. You know, whereas today that that ratio has just completely changed. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't work anymore. Just getting the girl's phone number. And then, you know, because now we have dating apps, we have social media. There's so many distractions for girls. But uh, this is before the pickup community. So what happened was I'm doing cold approach throughout the 90s. And then uh, my friends started getting married. And I, I did meet some cool girls back then who I could have wifed up. 
and that were fulfilling all the requirements I was looking for. Because a lot of people attack my attack me on my channel. They're like, oh, still doing cold approach, never found the one. It's like, no, I found several of them. It's just by a certain point, um, I decided that I wanted to keep going down this path and I didn't want to settle with just one person at the time. And uh, around this time, the, uh, the, uh, the pickup community started to form slowly. There was a site, I don't know if you remember this, but there was a site, the very first site that I saw that started to evolve in the early days of the pickup community was uh, Alt Fast Seduction. So oh, there was a- I think it's before my time. Okay, so there was a site called Alt Fast Seduction and that is where people started creating accounts. That's the first time I ever created an account. And uh, people were posting their infields. And I was like, oh, shoot, there are other guys out there like me who are doing this. This is crazy. And I was like, and some of these guys sounded like they really knew what they were talking about. You could tell it was weird. At this point, I was going out so much. I could tell the guys who were just making things up versus the guys who were actually doing it. And there yeah. were a good number of guys. Yeah, there were a number of like, legit guys on there. Uh, including mystery. Mystery was on that site. And everybody started to glom onto mystery's uh, infield posts. And I think the first time I heard about it was probably like 99 or 2000. That's when Alt Fast Seduction was around. And then it started to evolve more. And then uh, fast forward a few, a few years later, uh, the book The Game came out. And uh, I was like, I remember when he was even talking about this on the forums and uh, I remember uh, I used to go down to Hollywood a lot because it's not it wasn't far from San Francisco where I was living. And uh, so I would go down there a lot and I would see those guys at the Saddle Ranch in the early 2000s and they were doing pickup, they were doing game. And um, I was in there, too. It's like we we're all just kind of like running amok. And it was weird. I really love that era of the pickup community because it felt like we all had this like secret going on. and We all had this like weird superpower that nobody else had. And it was before dating apps. It was before social media. So these girls, I mean, even just getting their number still worked, you know, only now we have like all this skill and all this knowledge and we're accumulating even more knowledge from alt fast deduction. And then, you know, and then around the time the book, the game came out, that was kind of the beginning of the end because then the, the show, the pickup artist came out and then, you know, things slowly started to go downhill from there as far as that type of game, the success for that type of game goes. And then things just kind of transformed. And then obviously like RSD came along and then RSD kind of evolved the game a bit more and uh, started teaching more of a natural game. Whereas like mystery was all canned game back in the day. So RSD came in with like more of like a natural style game. And, uh, and you know, here we are today, you know and whatever happened to RSD, right? They're not even really around anymore. Uh, they're doing uh, risk minimization. So they moved on to self-development because it's safer. And there's more money in it because only a small subsect of guy know about pickup, but pretty much everyone knows about self-development. So they're making a strategic money move, which, you know, I'm not going to shut on them too much for that. Maybe just a little bit. Um, but okay, man, I find it pretty interesting. So you've been doing cold approach pickup for what, two, three decades? Yeah. Yeah. Hard to believe it's been that long. Um, yeah. It's hard to believe it's been that long, but uh, yeah, it's since I was 17. So now I'm in my, you know, my mid forties. So, uh, and I'm still out there and I'm still doing it. And, you know, it's guys always say, how, how much longer do you want to go? And I'm like, I go at least another decade. I, I love it that much. It's fun to me. Um, I mean, I'm aware of female nature. I've been aware of it, obviously, especially with teaching red pill stuff, but I still continue to go out there. I just went out the other night. I took a student out and it's still a whole lot of fun to me. I love that. It's, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a game, right? We're playing a game and we're yeah. just exercising our social skills. And, yeah. I mean, and everything is a form of a game. Like YouTube is a game, you know, where you know, business right. is a game, like all of like, there's some, there's some people who make the argument that life in itself is like a game and you want to win at the game of life, which I kind of agree with. Like all of this is like a form of a game and some games have more serious consequences. Like for example, business, you know, if you fail at this game, you know, you're not going <laughs> to, I mean, you're never going to starve to death, not in a first world country, but you might not be able to live in a nice place. Uh, but that's interesting. So let's, let's, let's touch on this actually, because I've been uh, doing cold approach pickup for about a decade now, and I have seen some changes during that decade. I do agree with you. I think you and I are going to agree on some things, disagree on others, but I do agree that uh, definitely like a phone number used to be more solid 10 years ago. Like yeah. I remember 2012, 2013, my game was worse, but I was probably having less flakes. 
right? So it kind of begs the question, why? And I do think that there are some things that have gone better and some things that have gone worse. And I do think that, yeah, flakiness has gotten worse. I do think that phone numbers on average are less solid. Now, I don't think that cold approach is not, you, you can't say that cold approach pickup doesn't work anymore. No, it does. I mean, it works right. quite often. Like I get girls' phone numbers. You just have to go through higher volume of numbers in order to get one. You can't just go out, get one phone number and be like, okay, well, I'm done for the day because chances are it's not going to work out. So mm -hmm. let me ask you this question. What are some specific ways you've seen the game change in the last 30 years or so? Uh, the biggest thing, again, starting with the phone numbers, whereas back in the day, I mean, when a girl gave you her phone number all the way up until even the two, like the very early 2000s, if she gave you her home phone number, um, I mean, you're pretty much, you pretty much still have that 50-50 shot of having, you know, going on a date with a girl, having sex with her, making her your girlfriend, making her your wife if you wanted, because when you would call her at home, she has to pick up. And back then... Uh, you know, for you guys that are old enough, um, back then you couldn't see who was calling, right? Most times, unless you paid like the phone company a little bit more money, you could see who was, uh, who was phone, like who was calling you. But uh, most times you couldn't and the girl would just have to take the chance and then, you you know, she'd be stuck on the phone with you. And usually you talk on the phone for like several hours. The girl feels like she's already getting to know, to know you. So by the time you go on a date, she feels like she knows you. Whereas after the year 2000, once we started to get cell phones, um, and I'm not even going to talk about pagers because back in the day we had pagers too. Right? <laughs> Pager game. <laughs> yeah. You did like page girls. Um, uh, and I remember having <laughs> some pager game. Uh, but after that in the 2000s, uh, once like social media started to come around, I noticed there was starting to be a shift. Like, I remember, I want to say it was in the mid 2000s when MySpace came about. I don't know if you remember MySpace. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I'm not that I, young. Yeah, like I was already, I was already like 30 by then. And I remember I was meeting college girls and I was like, like 14. <laughs> yeah, they're late teens. And they'd be like, I'd be like, oh, yeah, uh, let's exchange numbers. And she's like, okay, fine. Oh, are you on MySpace? And I remember going, what? And she was like, MySpace. And I was like, what's that? You know, and she was like, Oh my gosh, you got to get on MySpace. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I was completely lost, but the more and more girls started to like ask me, like, are you on MySpace and get me on my, or add me on MySpace. I'm like, you know, and, and there started to become the shift was like, I noticed like girls wanted to be part of your MySpace now. And also it, at that time, that transition made things easier because once they'd see your MySpace, and they'd see, especially if you're doing pickup, you have photos of you and all these girls, or you're always out with your friends, or you're taking photos at the club, which me and my friends would always do. Uh, and we're posting it on our, on our MySpace. The girls would see that, and it was all, all, almost like automatic social proof. So the girls would be like, oh, this guy is a cool guy. You wouldn't really have to spend hours with him on the phone anymore. Now it's like the social media was doing all the work for you. You know, and that's still happening today. But back then, nobody was really heavily into dating apps yet. There was no Tinder. There was no Bumble or anything like that. There were like, you know, there were a couple of online it's dating sites. Stuff, yeah. Nobody was focused on that. I mean, cold approach was still very, very much at its peak. And um, so, yeah, MySpace came along. And then uh, once, like, the dating apps came around, I noticed, like, that was the biggest shift. It was, like, probably around 2015 was when... Uh, like Tinder, Bumble, um, Instagram, Snapchat, and all these social media sites came along. Uh, that's when I noticed like I would be at a club and doing cold approach on girls and they would literally be on their phone swiping as their men, they're surrounded by men in the club. And I'm like, shit, now not only do I have to deal with her friends' obstacles, now the, uh, the biggest obstacle is not her friends, not the mother hen, but her cell phone. It's like, get off your freaking phone, right? have a conversation with me. Then it became about that. It was like, now the obstacles, the phone, you know? So um, with these, I mean, these days, even just getting a number, I, I just don't trust numbers anymore. Um, so these days, whenever I cold approach a girl and I get her number, I try to bounce her to another location. And I always teach guys that too. Try to get her on an insta date right then and there while she's standing in front of your face, like while you're right, she's right there because that's, the best opportunity you're going to have to sell her on who you are, why she should go out with you and everything else. That's the best opportunity to like show her you have value. Sell is probably the wrong word, but you know, 
try to get the girl on the Insta date right then and there. And, you know, the more time she spends with you, the more she's going to become invested in you and she's going to stop seeing you as an object and start seeing you as a person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a lot to touch on there. Um, yeah, I do agree that <laughs> people are way too much on their phones. I think that more has to do not with male or female, just generation. So like my generation, I'm 31. So when I go out with girls who are 30, 31, 32, 28, 29, most of the time, you know, we're just talking on the date. When I go out with an 18, 19, 20 year old, they're on their phone half the time. And I have to like yeah. scold them. I'm like, yo, get off your phone. Let's talk. And then you can go on your phone later. So yeah. it's like, but I find like a lot of these like younger generation, like literally not even significantly younger, just like 10 years younger than me. They're incapable of being off their phone for a period of time. They get like this, like anxiety. Like I see them sweating and shit when I make them put down their phone, they're like fucking having a panic attack. Uh, yeah. So I do think it's, I mean, it's a social phenomenon, how like social media has like, in some, I mean, in some ways it made things better. Like, you know, you can connect with people like, you know, you have, <laughs> you might not know, but your cousin from whatever that you didn't know, whatever hits you up. And now you connect with family. You can stay in touch. There's a lot of advantages to social media. So I don't think it's all bad, but I do think in some ways it is bad because, you know, we have become hermits on our phone. And I think COVID definitely made things worse in some way. Uh, you know, like some people like, to me, it's crazy how people are like, oh yeah, we don't even have to meet up in real life anymore. We can just do zoom hangouts. I'm like, like I want to hang out with people in real life. I don't want to just be like doing like these weird virtual hangouts. Like it's good for this situation because you and I are in a different city. Like if you were in Miami, like we would do this podcast in person, you know, right. uh, so pros and cons in terms of the Insta date. So this is one area where I would probably disagree with you on. That's not to say I think Insta dates are bad per se. I do think they're largely overrated and a waste of time. And I'll explain why. So okay. for example, let's say I have an hour, right? Cause time is another commodity. So let's say I have an hour to do cold approach during that hour. I could get, five to 10 phone numbers. Let's say for every phone number I get, 25% of them lead to dates or something like that. 20, let's do, let's be, let's say 20%. So let's say that if I do an Insta date with a girl, cause it's not a hundred percent, it jumps up to maybe 50%. So I could spend my hour, I get a, I get go on Insta date and that phone number goes from 20 to 50%. Cause it's not likely that you're going to pull and bang her that same day. Uh, unless like, you know, logistics work out, unless she has nothing else going on, which is rare though. Most of the time, especially if it's daytime, you're going to you know, have coffee with her. You're going to have a drink with her, but you're not going to pull her and bang her. So let's say that makes the number more solid. But if you just went out and got five other phone numbers at 20%, your overall odds of getting laid would still be higher. So that's my counter argument to insta dates. I think if you have a lot of time, go for it. Uh, but if your time is like, you know, you have very limited time. I think you get a bigger bang for your buck just getting more phone numbers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it really depends on, I mean, obviously time is a factor, uh, but if you're just going out there and you have, you know, you have time on your hands. Um, also, it depends too on what your focus is. I mean, if your focus is volume and quantity, then yeah, then obviously you don't want to just get stuck with one girl, right? Um, but if you're focused on like specifics, then you're willing to invest that in, you know, like an Insta date, if this chick is cool or like, Hey, you know, I think we got something here. And normally I won't take the girl on an Insta date and I don't advise students taking the girl on an Insta date. If there's like really like, there's no connection there, you're not feeling it with her. And you know, she's just willing to go cause she's bored in that case. It's like, you know, you're just going to waste each other's time. So probably best to just, you know, get her social media, get her number, you know, try to game her later if you want to and see what transpires, you know, no harm, no foul, but uh, try to focus on getting the girls that you want, you know, into your life. And yeah. like those quality girls that match up with your values, your beliefs, you know, your ideas, and uh, that will be cool chicks for you. Yeah. I mean, so fact of the matter is, you know, the world has become very flaky, uh, especially dating. And I think yeah. that, I think the only solution to that is volume. Um, I, I think it's good to run really good game and get as much investment from the girl and do everything you can to maximize your chances. But I still think that if you want to have a good dating life, you're going to have to run some type of volume. Like, uh, you know, you could have the best text game in the world, but if you're talking to one girl a day from Tinder, you're not going to have the results you want versus a guy with average game. If he's talking to 20 girls a day would have a much better dating success. Um, do you fuck with dating apps at all? Or are you just purely cold approach? Purely cold approach. I can't stand dating apps. Yeah. I mean, to me, that's the waste of time for me is because you could like be, you could see a girl's profile and she could be hot and you know, she, I mean, she could look hot in her photos and just take these weird angles from like way up here to make herself look thinner and all this. And then, you know, spend 
um, spent days talking to her. Some guys even weeks and months like talk to these girls and they'll like fly to her country. It's insane to me. They do this. Yeah, that, that is insane. I agree. Yeah. Right. And then they get off the plane and there she is waiting at the airport. And it's like, oh, you know, oh, my God, who is this? Whereas with cold approach, the thing I love about cold approach is you could see the person like she's right in front of you. And there's so many girls that I cold approach these days because I've gotten like, that's a good thing about doing pickup for so long. You get pickier and pickier and you get more entitled more and true. you're able to stay congruent with that entitlement. You know, it's not like fake. It's like, no, I've dated hotter girls and this is what I want. I know what I want yeah. and you're not that hot. And you give off that vibe to the girl where the girl's yeah. like, you know, there's something about this guy. He feels like he's like entitled to me. He's yeah. deserving of me. And that's where pre-selection works for you too. But um, that's a great thing about cold approaches. You could see like right then and there, like, oh, okay, is there a connection here? Do I like this girl? Do I not? Um, lately, the thing that's been bugging me with girls, this is so nitpicky, but I mean, this is something that never bugged me back in the day are girls, uh, the depth of girls' voices. I know, I mean, this is what happens when you do it for so long, but like if the girl sounds too masculine, if her voice is too deep, it just turns me off. I don't care how hot she is. I like a girl who just kind of sounds a little feminine, a little yeah. girly. Yeah, and that's what well, I look I for. I think we're hardwired to want that. We want a feminine voice. We want polarity. So you want a girl who's feminine. You don't want, well, at least most guys don't want a girl who's masculine. Like, you don't want to. That's why I'm, you know what's a big turnoff to me is the chicks who, like, get, like, too into bodybuilding to the point where they're, like, taking testosterone and shit. And maybe she was hot, like, two years ago before she got into that. But if she gets, like, I like a very fit girl. But when she gets into, like, you know, like, you don't talk about the bodybuilding girls. Like, that yeah. to me becomes gross. <laughs> I'd rather yeah. have a slightly poorly girl, like just slightly like a little flabby than the like the overly muscular girl. Like the girl right. should not have better abs than me. That's my <laughs> rule. Like if a girl has better abs than I do, like that's 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 a fucking deal breaker. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that either. It's just like way too masculine. Yeah. But I do think I do, I do think you said something interesting. Like I definitely think there's pros and cons. So I'm definitely not the type of person that's gonna say online is better than cold approach and vice versa. I think there's pros and cons. And one of the pros of a uh, cold approach is, yeah, you do know exactly what you're getting, right? You know what the girl's going to look like. If she was an eight, when you cold approach her, she's going to be an eight on the date, right? Um, yeah. And sometimes you get like these pleasant surprises where you cold approach a girl and she's cute, but she was maybe wearing a hoodie, right? So you couldn't really see her body. And then when you add her on Instagram, you realize she's at like the fattest ass ever. So you get like yeah. these like pleasant, pleasant surprises versus with online dating, the girl is going to put her best pictures forward, right? So it's not going to be like nearly as much of that. I yeah, think yeah. also you can see how much of a chemistry you have with that girl. And I personally find, uh, cause I actively do both cold approach and online that for me, cold approach numbers on average are more solid than online numbers. Uh, I find that if I get a girl's number from cold approach, there's probably a 50% chance that she's going to be responsive. And if she's responsive, there's probably a 50% chance we're going to meet up on a date. So that's like one in four or something like that, which is not bad versus online. It's closer to like one in 10. Um, so that's one thing I've noticed. However, I do think there's some pros of online. I think that cold approach, generally speaking, is fairly inefficient. And that's simply because a lot of the girls you approach, they're either going to be in relationships, you're not going to be their type, they're not, they're going to be in a bad mood, so they're not going to be down to talk that day. So it requires, you know, it, it's fairly inefficient versus online is more efficient because the girl has already, one, admitted that you're her type because she swiped right on you. She's either single or she's willing to cheat. Uh, she's kind of like committed to at least like seeing where it goes now. So I do think there's kind of like pros and cons. I think that, but, hmm, go ahead. No, I was just, oh, go ahead, finish your point. I was, yeah, yeah I, mean, I, was, I was saying I do agree that it's pretty sad when guys like fly across. Like I always, I'm a big pragmatist. So I think you should keep things, you know, like I, I always ask, say when guys like, oh, there's this really hot girl who's in a different country and I want to text game her. I'm like, don't even bother. Tell her that if she, it, tell her this, tell her that if she's coming to your city to hit you up and that's it. Leave it at that because you're going to be wasting your time. Don't fucking fly. Don't even drive. Don't talk to girls for more than an hour away from you who you haven't met, right? Like you want to keep logistics in your favor. Don't try to game girls who are like, you know, married, maybe in the chance. Like, I mean, unless she's like actively trying to cheat, like don't waste your time on shit. So I'm definitely a yeah. pragmatist. Uh, don't waste your time. Like, for example, would you mention the girl doesn't look like her picture? So for me, I tell all the girls to either come straight to my place or meet me at a bar nearby. And so when a chick comes to my place, I go outside in my lobby, I see her. And of course it happens. Sometimes a girl doesn't look like her pick. 
So I'm yeah. not going to spend two hours on a date with her. I'm going to give her a hug. I'm going to, you know, say, hey, nice to meet you. I'm sorry. I'm not feeling it. And I'm going to walk my way. So I wasted like five minutes on that. So I think that there are ways to really minimize the downsides of online dating in a pragmatic yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, before I, get, before I get to my question, I wanted to ask you, uh, yeah. yeah, when it comes to bringing the girl to your place, I try to avoid that as much as possible. I always try to go to the really? girl's place. Yeah, I don't want to know where I live. Um, I always really? try to, this is something I've always done, actually. I've noticed that. I mean, even now that I have a much nicer place and, you know, I mean, it would totally work in my favor. She saw my place, she saw my car, you know, and all this other stuff. But I still prefer like, okay, well, where's your place? You know, if it's close by, I mean, worst case scenario, if I have to bring her to my place, I do. So it's like kind of like a last resort type of thing. But why, you know, why, why, why is that? Why do you prefer the girl's place? Just to kind of keep that anonymity until we start dating. Um, so, yeah, until we start like dating and like at least go start going on more regular dates, then I'll start kind of like bringing her around. But I usually try to avoid it. It's not like I never do it, but I usually my first go to is like, OK, let's where's your place? If I just met the girl, like through a cold approach, if I kind of know her a little bit uh, better, then I'll try to bring her to my place. But uh, <clears throat> usually I'll like try to go to the girl's place just to maintain that anonymity. Uh, Are you like worried she's going to steal something or what's the uh, underlying no, concern there? No, I, just, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's the anonymity of it. And just like not having her, I mean, even the few girls I did bring to my place like have like come back or they're just like, they're like showing up at weird, <clears throat> weird times where they're uninvited. So yeah. Yeah. Have you actually had that happen? I've honestly never had a girl uh, randomly. Oh yeah, I've had girls just like show up and knock on the door. I'm like, hi, and they're like, hey, you know, are you ready for breakfast? I'm like, uh, sure, you know, and I'm like, okay, now it's awkward, and then I have to kind of like let the girl know, like, I'm not really looking for anything, you know, extended with you. I mean, yeah, at least I'm, at assuming, that I'm assuming you live in a house then, right? Yeah, at the time when this was happening, I was living in an apartment. Okay, because like the way where, like where I live, for example, there's like you know there's security people they they call up, so there's no way a girl could get to my apartment without me letting her in. So I do think yeah. you can <laughs> avoid that happening just by having a doorman or something like that. <laughs> um, okay, that's oh, interesting. Yeah, ahead. my question that I want to ask you was: so when you go out and do cold approach, are you going specifically for volume? And like it sounds like you're going for volume and are you just main, primarily looking for those yes girls? And if they're a, like a no or a maybe girl, do you just toss them aside? Because when you go out, right, there's those three type of girls that you come across, the yes girls, the maybe girls, and the no girls. Yep. And a lot of guys, I mean, and no, to, I mean, there's no right or wrong way, right? Because I have buddies like that. They're like, they don't want to waste time and they'll, they'll like bounce and we'll just, you know, split ways because they're looking for those yes girls. And where I'm kind of like looking for like a specific type of chick. And if I don't find her, I'm not, I mean, I've let a lot of ladies go too. I'm like, I, I don't care. I mean, I'm going for like a specific type of girl. Um, so do you go for mainly, are you looking for those yes girls when you go, when you're like volume approaching? Yeah, so I think there's two separate questions there. First is like, am I volume approaching in a way? But I do have a very specific criteria and most girls do not meet that criteria. For example, I like, uh, think of Leela Star, like the porn star. That's the kind of look I like. I like girls with big tits, big asses, but flat stomach. I don't like the, thick, thick girls. You know, I like girls who are curvy, but they still have like a really rocking bod um, between five feet and five, four. So I definitely have a very specific type and most girls would not fit into that criteria. So I'm maybe approaching less than 10% of girls. Um, okay. So yeah, as, as, assuming that a girl meets my criteria and I have the time, yeah, I will approach her. In terms of, uh, yes, I will rule out the no girls because I frankly, I think they're the waste of time. If a girl is like not interested, it's very small probability that you're going to be able to turn it around. At the very least, it's going to take a shitload of time. So I'm going for yes girls and maybe girls. Um, okay. I think that most of your results are going to come from yes girls. There's also a substantial amount of uh, results that will come from maybe girls. And I think that maybe girls sometimes can be hotter than yes girls. So I think that there's pros to that, but yeah, I'm not gonna waste my time on no girls. So to me, like the most important thing is my time and how I budget that. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I think we have, we both have like our different styles of game. Mm -hmm. um, or uh, we, yeah, we basically uh, assimilate our time differently. But if you met like say a Layla star who was like your perfect type and you know, you had a brief conversation with her. She had 
a lot of your same values, beliefs, and just like a lot of things in common. And she was kind of still a no girl. Would you sit there and try to work game on her knowing like, wait, we, we might have something here, but she's giving you a hard time. And she's like, no, you know. Well, it depends if she's truly a no girl. If she's like, hey, listen, man, I'm not interested. I'm not gonna like, you know, like harass her or something mm -hmm. like that. It just depends the, the extent of the no and how serious it is. If she's like playfully, she's like, oh, stop, I don't know. Like, then yeah, I'll persist. But if she's like a hard no, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna push past that. I'm not gonna bother with that. Right, okay. I mean, cause there are some girls that like, I mean, if you go out to a lot of clubs um, and there are times where if you go out enough, like you, there'll be girl situations where like one night you see a girl and she'll be like, no, F off, leave me alone, yeah, you know, I'll go away, you know? And then you see her the next night and she's in a completely different mood. And sure. she's like, oh, hey, it's you. Yeah. And, no, you I've, know, I've had that happen multiple times, but right. she's still a no girl in that moment, right? Okay. In that moment, no that persistence might do the trick versus literally next time you see her, you just, you don't even need that much persistence, right? So she's still a no girl at that point in time. Doesn't mean she can't become a late, but yes, girl later on, or a maybe girl. I personally had that happen many times. Like I remember one time, saw a hot girl at the gym. She was just like giving me one word answers and just like, uh huh, uh huh, I gotta go. And I saw her at Whole Foods, just kind of waved to her as I kept walking. She waved back. And I was like, I just literally just like in passing, I said, oh, hey, we're funny running into you again. What are you following me? And then she was like super jovial. She was super down. She gave me her number. And she told me uh, later on that she was just in a really bad mood. I forget why, but something happened. Something I remember thinking was substantial, uh, why she was in a really bad mood that day. So, you know, there would have been no point in me, like, persisting further that day. At that point, she was no girl. Next time I saw her, she was a maybe girl. Right, right. Yeah. A lot of times what, uh, when I take students out, when they get, like, a maybe or a no girl or a hard target, um, I do make them – I do force them to work game on that girl and try to turn it around because – what I found is like that is where you develop a lot of deep, like a lot of deep social mastery is like trying to turn somebody's uh, objection into a yes, you know, and because um, a lot of pickup really is sales, right? I mean, pickup is mm -hmm. mainly sales, like a lot of sales skills and pickup. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember in college, I sold cars for a while. So I, I learned a lot of just like I, we would have customers who come on a lot and like, no, don't talk to me. Leave me alone. Hey, 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 don't talk to me. I'm leaving this. I'm leaving a lot if you talk to me and all this like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. You know, and you just learn to kind of like push and pull and push and pull. And um, so when students are in a set with, uh, especially like a hardcore, not really a hardcore newbie, but even like in an intermediate students in is in a set where he's like, no, she's not interested. I will literally go to that girl and be like, just start working game on her and turn her around just to show the student like you blew it. You know, you kind of had her you could have turned her right this girl could have tur been turned so i think there's like a fine line i i see where you're going with this and you're more you're more skilled so you know like hey there's nothing here i'm done whereas a lot of guys will use that as an excuse like uh -huh. oh nothing there gotta go i'm bouncing and it's like no dude you know there's something there you're just you're you're ejecting way too early and i think that's like a sticking point of a lot of like at least newbies i see is like they eject yeah. way too early yeah, for sure. And I agree with that. I mean, I think that uh, a lot of, for example, newbies, they confuse a girl being a no girl for the girl just being shy. Like she's just a little yeah. shy. And they think that she's being a con or she's being a bitch, but she's actually just a little nervous. And maybe she likes you, but she's just, she, she doesn't know how to communicate that. And she just needs more comfort. Um, so yeah, I agree with that. But I would make the argument going back to the car thing. If someone walks on the lot, that by default means that they have some interest. Now they may be saying, no, no, I don't want to talk to you. I don't talk to me. But if, because they're on the lot, they have some interest in the car. And what you're doing is you're, you're kind of getting that interest out and you're lowering their objections. So, for example, if you go in and you start talking to a girl, and she's like, I'm not interested, but she's still standing there and her body language is fairly open. She's not walking away. She's still interested because a girl who's like, no, she's going to walk away. Sure. And at sure. that point, she's going to be like, no, thank you. I'm not interested. And she's going to walk away versus kind of like a girl who's like, ha ha. No, no. Like she, she might, that's more of a maybe girl, even though she's saying no, it's the same thing. Like, you know, if you're, it's like, if you follow, like, let's say you're doing door to door sales. I think that's a better example than yeah. uh, the dealership because a dealership, anyone who comes in has some base level of interest. You're doing door to door sales. I think that's closer equivalent to cold approach. And uh, someone is like, 
yo, like I actually, or like, I'm not interested at all. I'm sorry. I already have this product or uh, it doesn't work for me, blah, blah, blah. You're going to waste your time. If you keep, you know, you gotta, you gotta move on. Like I used to do a lot of door to door sales and I found that I had to budget my time. But yeah, of course, like a lot of the entry level door to door salesmen, the process would be like, oh yeah, no, no, thank you. And they'd be like, okay, cool. Nice to meet you. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Cause I was a sales trainer. I was like, hang on, hang on. I'll be like, oh, excuse me, sir. Do you mind telling me why you're not interested? Like, do you, do you do you think you don't qualify for the program? Oh, what do you mean I don't qualify? Well, you know, not everyone qualifies for this program, but what makes you? Oh, well, you know, tell me about it, and then you just turn it around. So yeah, yeah. for me, I I think like once the girl, if I'm at a venue and she's at the venue, uh, it's open season because I'm like, if she's here, she's. I mean, you're here to socialize, right? Even yeah. if I don't want to pick the girl up, I'm like, you're in a social situation. Uh, you're here to socialize, so I, it, for me, it's open season. Whereas, like, I, I know what you're talking about, like street game. Um, if you're doing like day game and you're, you know, you're just kind of out and about and uh, like picking girls up off the subway or whatnot, it's like they're just going about their day. Um, I even then, I try to take like a Jordan Belfort, like Wolf of Wolf of Wall Street approach, where and he did something. He did a video where he was going up and down the street with some some like average salesperson who was like, I can't sell this. I can't sell that. And he went with him and he started like, he got like all these contracts all of a sudden out of like just the same block. So it depends. Like, I mean, obviously if the juice is not worth the squeeze then yeah, you have to balance. Right. But if the juice is worth the squeeze, I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm down with staying, but uh, that's just me. Yeah. I think there's, there's some level of personal preference there. I think you want your game to be efficient. So if you're bouncing yeah. too early, that's not efficient. If you're staying in too long and situations that are not going where that's also not efficient. So, you know, the, the, there's just some, there's a right balance somewhere in the middle and sometimes you're going to, you're, you're not going to know. Right. So you think right. that the girl is going to be down then last minute something comes up. So there's going to be a certain amount of time wasting. That's naturally part of the game, uh, but you want to yeah. minimize that as much as you can. Yeah. I mean, if the girl is hot, and she's cool and she's um she's like a non-feminist like she's not espousing a lot of these like feminist beliefs if she's like more conservative traditional uh for me that's like really that's a hard combination to find so i'm gonna stay in that set and i'm gonna burn it to the ground i will like literally try to burn that to the ground because i know it's it's tough coming across those girls at least especially these days i mean even back in the day you wouldn't come across too many of them but now it's like especially harder to find those girls who haven't bought into a lot of this like feminist garbage and like uh you know empowerment and funny. do you live in san francisco still no i moved to la but i was born and raised in san francisco so i lived there pretty much my whole life until about uh less than a, 10 years ago okay i lived in la for a while i do think that partially uh you're getting a very uh biased view of the dating pool because Chicks in SF, especially and LA, are going to be way more on that side of what you don't like. Versus if yeah. you get out of that area, you're going to find that a lot more girls are actually. So I, because I've lived all over the place. I've lived in LA. I've been to SF. I've lived in Texas. I live in Miami now. So I do find that, for example, where I live, I would say that majority of girls are not feminists at all. Like they're just normal chicks. Like it's less than ten percent of chicks here who are like hardcore. SJW feminists. Most of them are just like normal girls who want to find a guy. Uh, they want to be happy and blah, blah, blah. They're not like these like hardcore SJW feminist chicks. Not at all. And I live in a major city. So I, I yeah. do think it kind of matters where you live. Well, here especially, but I mean, I've game girls outside of the state and it's, they still, even though they're not as uh, emboldened to kind of like express their views like they are in California, I feel like the feminist brainwashing has like reached all like globally it's like global because i game gir girls in uh, eastern europe girls from ukraine and it's like they're normally traditional and now they're kind of espousing some of these beliefs not to the point of like somebody who's from california but like they're well, still what, like, what specific beliefs are we talking about here they're just like you know like oh they'll say just random things once in a while like oh uh do you believe in the uh, gender pay gap i'm like no it's it, there is no gender pay gap. And then we'll kind of have a, have a debate about it. Uh, and most of them can be turned back. That's a, that's a, well, that's the positive is most of these like quote unquote feministas, these young ones can be turned back because they have a lot of just coffee shop talking points that they took from watching the mainstream or watching movies. But I mean, now it's like global. I mean, it's like, yeah, feminism's everywhere. Um, and these girls, whether they know it or not, they're, they're being subjugated to it. So even the girls that I meet that are traditional and don't espouse the feminist beliefs, every once in a while, they'll spout out something that's like, whoa, 
you know, where did you hear that? And then the girl will be like, oh, I don't know. My friend was talking about that. I'm like, well, ask that friend because, you know, that's like a feminist talking point. So I'm always quick to nip that in the bud. But if the girl is like completely SJW, completely woke, I won't even go there. I don't even care how hot she is anymore. I'm like, I'm done now. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm not that big on super woke SJW chicks either. I mean, I'm not big on super woke SJW anyone. Uh, simply because I find that, honestly, I have like, for example, kind of a side tangent, but politically, I'm, I'm somewhere between a liberal and a libertarian. Like, I'm a big proponent of people should be able to do what they want, but I'm also, I also care about the environment and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so, yeah. I, f I have some very conservative friends, like people who voted for Trump and shit. And I find that with them, I can have like a reasonable, rational discussion where we don't yell at each other and we just we can discuss things and we disagree. Uh, but that's OK. Versus with my friends who are more like hardcore leftists, I wouldn't call them liberals, like leftists. You yeah. can't have like a debate like they just get so triggered, so pissed off. But that's like a complete side tangent. Um, yeah. yeah. In terms of the uh, the feminist thing, I do think that the feminist movement kind of did itself a disservice because initially it was all about equality, which I think 99% of guys can get behind. Like, I think most guys do agree that a woman should get paid and they do. Like, I, I agree that the feminist uh, wealth, I mean, the, the wealth gap has been like scientifically debunked many times, but uh, you know, we in like 50 years ago, you know, like if we were living in a world where women weren't getting paid the same, we'd be like, yeah, of course they should get paid the same. Of course they should get equal protection under the law. I think the feminist movement lately has become about power and control and it's no oh, yeah. longer about equality. And it's about, it's not about raising women. It's about putting men down. And that's kind of yeah. unfortunate. Uh, it's like a small subsect of feminists have kind of hijacked the movement, which is the same thing that's happened with a lot of other movements with the left and with the right. It's like a small subsect of crazies kind of hijacked the women, the movement. And yeah, that is what it is. Uh, so yeah, it's unfortunate. I don't think the problem is nearly as prevalent as a lot of people make it out to be because uh, you know, I'm out a lot and most of the chicks I encounter are normal. They're not like crazy, you know, leftist feminists. Of course, do I meet those chicks? Yes, but it's not the majority of the time at all, yeah. at least for me. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of the very first videos that I ever uploaded to my 33 Secrets channel was uh, never give women power because they'll always abuse it. So the more women that go into power, like the more like encroachment on our freedoms you see. And like there is a shift. I mean, just getting back to your point, like because I've been doing pickup for the last like close to three decades now, not more than that. But uh, I've noticed just kind of like the persona of a lot of girls, whereas before, even if they were like what we would call today a classic leftist, they didn't really espouse a lot of those beliefs boldly. They were still kind of like, yeah, I want to find a husband. Yeah, I want to have a family. And yeah, I know where that, I want to be, you know, I want to have a fulfilling life. Whereas these days, I rarely hear that. I don't hear that as much from women. It's like less than half of them are saying that. Whereas back in the day, almost every girl that I approached back then was looking for that. They were like looking to settle down and have a husband and have a family. Whereas now it's like, no, I could have a kid on my own or I'm going to freeze my eggs. I've heard a lot of girls talk about like, oh, I'm going to freeze my eggs or uh, I I don't uh, I don't feel like I need a man or I, I'm just, you know, a lot of Dude, I think you got to get out of the way. Like I almost never hear that. And I'm out a lot like most women in Miami or just in general, most women are like, yeah, I'm just having fun right now. But I do want to sell down with a guy and have a kid. That's what most women or at least at the very least, I want to sell down with a guy like I don't want to, you know fucking live on my own forever uh well in california like where i where i live it's like a very transient city so we get a lot of tourists like we i'm constantly meeting people i rarely ever meet anyone even when i was living in san francisco that was from san francisco they were always like oh i'm from sweden oh i'm from you know i'm from russia or oh i'm from you know they're they're always from somewhere else but yet they're 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 still like even if they're on vacation, they're still like, I could tell like, wow, why, why do you have these beliefs when you live all the way in like, you know, the other part of the world? Why are you espousing these beliefs? So that's why I just say, I think it's feminism is like affecting women globally. If right now it's still kind of on a subconscious level, if not overtly, but I, I believe it will continue to get worse as time goes on. Um, if it continues on the path that it is now, which I don't think it will because now we have YouTube and now we have like all these like red pill channels and even the black pill channels or the MGTOWs talking about it um, and talk about what a horrible, you know, what a horrible idea feminism is. But uh, 
Anyway, I think we're getting too far off. Yeah, topic. no, we are. And I, I would say this is one. This is one of the you know several points I disagree with the red pill community on. I don't think that the uh, feminist uh, whatever issue is nearly as bad as a lot of them. I don't think it's prevalent, and I I don't think it's going to be getting worse because I see I see the pendulum swing in the other direction now. Like I see because you it happens all the time when one I, the I, world has gone too SJW too feminist, and now it's swinging back because a lot of people are like yo I don't like to have to be super careful about what I say. I don't like to like you know have to constantly do false virtue signaling and all that. Like this has gone too far. Like you know whatever cancel culture has gone too far. And I, I do see like the pendulum now swinging in the other direction. Uh, but I guess we'll have to see you know where it goes. But I, I don't think we're, it's going to be. I personally don't predict it's going to be going even further like that. And the world is. I, I think it's going to swing in the other direction. And we're going to find a. Yeah. Well, it's more. pretty scary. Like where we are now, where it's like. I mean, even just 10 years ago, if you were to tell people like, oh, my, I'm getting banned off of this platform because I said, I said this, you know, people would be like, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. That's, that had never happened. And now it's like reality. No, so yeah, I, no, I, I agree with that. that. That's super fucked. I'm super against like cancel culture. And yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's crazy. It, it is insane how like literally, and it does swing in one direction. Like usually you can say like pretty crazy left wing shit and get away with it. And again, oh, totally. I'm more left wing, but I will acknowledge that. Like, you can say pretty crazy left wing shit and totally get it off. Once you go to the right, you will get kicked off quite often, more often. Exactly. Than yeah. And like, you'll get demonetized and penalized in the algorithm. There's all kinds of shit that will happen that you might not yeah. get directly kicked off, but yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's the danger. It's like we're going too far in one direction. And I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not a like conservative or a liberal, I'm kind of like in the middle. Um, I, that's why I've said, even with pickup and red pill and blue pill and all this, you have to have a balance because that's where the power is. If you're just like, I'm only red pill, I'm only black pill, I'm only purple pill. There's really, you're not, you're really missing out on the larger, uh, yeah. the large picture, right? No, I a hundred percent agree with you on that. I think that people are too, too eager to identify with a tribe because I think it gives them a sense of belonging. Like, yeah, I'm part of this red pill thing. I'm part of this yeah. pickup thing. And then you feel like you have to agree with all the ideas. But uh, yeah. now they're all attacking each other too. Do you see what's going on like YouTube? Yeah. Like each like faction is bashing each other. And that's sad to me because we're all part of the manosphere. We're all trying to help each other get better. And we all have our different beliefs that can lead you to get better. You just have to kind of like pick and pull what what's best for you. Like people will watch our interview and pick things that you said and be like, nope, what Alex said works better for me, but these one or two things that that M said will work better for me too. So I implore yeah. anyone watching to use both, right? Yeah, yeah, no, you gotta use critical thinking. I think the problem is too many people are nowadays are incapable of having like rational debates. Like it's, it's just become like yelling and like virtue signaling and like calling the other person a dipshit and all of that. Like just so many people, this, this goes back to what I was saying earlier, like a lot of red pill people, they don't wanna come on. Uh, my channel. They just, yeah, that's weird. Us. I don't know why they wouldn't. Alex is a pickup guy, so you know he's going to say things I disagree with. So who gives a fuck? Like, anyway, uh, that's a whole tangent we can get into. So what I what I want to touch on is how. What would you say are like the big tenets of the Red Pill community? Uh, the big tenets. I mean, honestly, I I I'll give you some tenets, but I don't know if I'm the authority to speak on that because I don't really. Based on your perspective. Based on my perspective, it's just uh, understanding the reality of female nature. Um, and I mean, for me, the way I came to that really was through cold approach pickup and game. And uh, I didn't want to see it for the longest time. But at the same time, I don't want to get caught up in the ugliness of it. I want to use it to my advantage. So like when I approach a girl, I'm not approaching her thinking, you know what, you hypergamous bitch. You know, instead I'm like, okay, may I, I in my mind, I'm already thinking like she's gonna, she's a cool girl. She's gonna be cool to me, and we're gonna have this great connection. And if we don't, that's fine. I'll move on to the next girl. I'm I'm not approaching her thinking like all these negative thoughts about women in my head. I let all that go like once I'm in the venue and whatnot. But when I'm teaching guys, I do make them aware of it, and I do make them aware of like just the 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 nature of female behavior. And I'm like, this is what they're capable of, and they're not really capable of you know, loving you in the way you feel like you deserve to be loved as a man. Um, you know, I mean, just a lot of things that you learn just through basic cold approach. But uh, uh, and I've said this, too, just we were talking about a history lesson earlier. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of guys who are younger don't realize that the red pill, MGTOW, um, the entire manosphere started 
with the pickup community. Right. Yeah. Literally, all of this evolved from the pickup community because I was back, I remember back in the late 90s when I found all fast seduction because I was like trying to find other guys who were doing game and uh, there was no red pill, there was no manosphere, there was nothing. It was just it was just all fast seduction and then the pickup community started to form and then in the mid 2000s when the mystery method stuff started to come about you had it split where some guys were having success and then other guys were not and the guys who were not having success you know for whatever reason that's where i started to see like a migtow type it, like community form where they're like oh you guys are dumb for picking up these girls or oh all bitches are stupid and they started kind of like forming their own thing and uh and going against the pickup community then the faction split and then MGTOW started to develop a little bit more into like the red pill stuff and then so did the pickup community you had like guys like old school pickup artists like myself who were like saying well yeah female nature this is what they do and blah 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 and then so all these factions started to uh, build out but it originally all originated from the pickup community itself which a lot of these guys bash i i don't get it i'm like this all started with the PO, PUA community and guys going out there and doing cold approach. This is where we got a lot of this information. And instead of bashing us, how about a thank you? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to hear that you kind of have a more balanced approach. Um, I have my fair share of issues with the Red Pill community. I never totally bash them because I do think they get some things right. I right. do think right. that community has its fair share of issues. I think I see a lot of overgeneralization and lack of nuance. So a lot of like, oh, chicks are chicks are they're hyper like let's take hyper hypergamy. Oh, chicks are hypergamous. You know, like these chicks will you know trade up. Some chicks will, some chicks won't. Um, some chicks will stay with you. You know, as long as they're happy, they'll ignore that rich guy. It really depends on the girl. So I see a yeah. lot of like, like I feel like a lot of the red pill guys they've had bad experience with women and they've made generalizations. Okay, well this chick did this to me, thus all women are going to do this, right? Versus right. like women are you know extremely diverse, just like men are very diverse. So it'd be like I, I almost equate it to like when a feminist she's like, Oh, you know, men are pigs. Okay, why are men pigs? Well, because this guy did this to me. Okay, but you ever stop and think that maybe it was just this guy? It's not all men, like we're not all the same, just like women are not all the same. Now, of course, there's some universal rules, like for example, right. women are not attracted to weak men. That's a universal rule. But I think that yeah, there's a lot of like I see overgeneralization. And also, unfortunately, I see a lot of uh, it doesn't seem like there's any on your end, but in general, I see a lot of bitterness in the Red Pill community uh, where just guys are just like pissed off. And I don't know. <laughs> and also a lot of like victim mindset. <laughs> yeah. Which I will no, say. No, I can definitely see that. I mean, some of these guys, I mean, not just to play devil's advocate, they're coming mm -hmm. off like a bitter divorce. The wife took yeah. everything. Or they're coming from a really harsh breakup where they invested so much into this girl for like 10 or 15 years and then she just leaves them for a guy she met a week ago you know so i get that but that's why i always teach these guys too that this is why you need to learn social skills and you need to just learn all of this stuff in general that you have to learn from pretty much the entire manosphere where whether it's red pill the pickup community migtow or even some of the black pill guys you should Try to just invest yourself into learning a lot of all of this, just so that you're not you're not so naive when you're out there thinking like, oh, this person's going to be my soulmate when you chose poorly. Maybe there is a person out there who could be your soulmate, but it wasn't that person, right? right. Um, and I think that's the beauty with like pickup and game is like you can create a pool of dating options, which I always teach my students to do. Like create a pool of dating options if you want to get married. Create a pool of dating options of like your specific type of girls, and then pick one of those girls out of your dating options rather than just pick the one cute girl yeah. that you went to school with 10 years ago. That's like semi cute, semi chubby. And then hoping she, you know, you're just going to like throw caution to the wind and try to make her your wife. And, you know, fast forward 10 years later, she's like, you know, 300 pounds overweight, chopped off all her hair and she's taken everything you own. No, for sure. I mean, I definitely agree with that, that you should play, pick from a place of abundance. I think the problem is a lot of guys get into relationships because it's like they're not getting laid much and they're like oh this one chick who's fucking me she doesn't treat me like total shit uh you know you know my dad got married my grandpa got married so i probably should sell down too you know that's kind of what you know people i'm already in my 30s i probably need to sell down they sell down the girl's not really right for them they don't really screen the girl 
Um, they don't really have clear boundaries. The girl doesn't really respect them. And then, you know, the relationship eventually blows up. Also, I do think that, yeah, a lot of guys are living in like the fairy tale that they were sold. Like, okay, you know, if I want to make this relationship work, I need to uh, provide a good house for the girl. I need to, uh, you know, be a career man. I need to put a few kids in her and that will make her happy. Right. And then, you know, I'll, we'll be together forever. But in reality, you might be better off just, you would have been better off just being more selective in the girl that you dated, uh, having more clear boundaries and fucking her really well rather than, you know, like building, giving her the white picket fence. So I do think that, um, yeah, like there's a lot of, a lot of that where guys are, yeah. And I, I feel bad for these guys, you know, they got fucked and they become bitter. Um, you know, so it's understandable, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they need to pull out of that because yeah, you, they're stuck in uh, what they they call they have a name for it actually. It's called uh, red pill rage, red, oh, pill, red, rage. Pill. Like, red pill rage. Like, ugh, you know, I can't believe this bitch took advantage of me. But then too, a lot of reason why they're bitter is because uh, they nobody ever told them this. It's it's almost like they're coming to an awakening. It's like, and then they feel kind of like they've been had, they've been sold a lemon, they've been you know they've been scammed. You know, it's like nobody told me this. So when they find like the red pill community, it's kind of like, oh, my gosh, it's it's acknowledgement of all of the things that society neglected. So, I mean, I get that. I mean, I get the red pill guys. I get I even get the black pill guys. I mean, even though I don't like I don't live that way, I choose to pick up women. I love interacting with humanity and whatnot. But uh, but I am aware of like female nature at the same in the same sense. But I can enjoy them. You know, it's just like I mentioned earlier, you could have like a plate of nachos. You're aware that this is high calorie. It's not the best for you, but you know, you're going to treat yourself. <laughs> See, I, again, I would make the argument that if you are, uh, as long as you're not a retard, like, yeah, I don't think it's good. I see a lot of like, you know, so I'll, I will, I agree with you in a lot of points. Like I see a lot of guys get taken for a ride and that's because, but it's not just by women. It's by other aspects. It's by, you know, guys, it's by society. Like, you know, like fucking, for example, investing $200,000 in a university degree, that's going to do you nothing. Like you just got yeah. scammed for 200K, you know, yeah. and it was, you know, held by the government. So yeah, like I, if you're not aware, like you can get fucked and, you know, the sugar babies, gold diggers, whatever. But I would yeah. argue there are some really cool tricks out there. And uh, as long as, you know, you you know who you are and you have boundaries, those tricks will not fuck you over and they will actually enhance your life like for example me personally like i'm in an open relationship right now with a girl who's great she only asks my wife she doesn't detract at all we have a great time together i have my freedom uh awesome girl and like all the other past relationships i've been in were great i've never you know had a bad breakup never had a chick fuck me over but i am very selective about who i date i will fuck pretty much anyone who's attractive but when it comes to dating well when i say anyone i mean female anyone but when I, uh, when it comes to, you know, dating, I'm very selective. Like I'm not, most girls will not meet my criteria to be my girlfriend. Like she has to be really loyal. She has to be a good person, a good human being. But I would argue that those good people still very much exist. They're out there. They're not as scarce as sometimes I think the Red Pill community makes them think. And especially once you get outside of like some of the major cities like LA, SF, uh, New York, and you go more into like the smaller cities or other countries, they're actually there's a lot of them. I should look. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all about filtering them out. I mean, I, it, even without like all the uh, feminist uh, or red pill stuff, I mean, you still have to find that, that person who's right for you. So, I mean, that's already hard enough as it is, but um, you know, that's why we do pick up. That's why we do game. But uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. They're out there. I, you know, I mentioned on my channel a number of times, I'm seeing a girl right now and uh, she's uh, she's 19, she's about to turn 20. And she, you know, she's not like that at all. But um, yeah, there was a lot of filtering to get there. And she's a cool girl. She doesn't take from me at all. She just adds to my life, comes on my, you know, comes on my trips, helps me out, like helps me shoot and stuff like that. And she's never really like, she's not like, you know, poison dripping or causing me any headache or anything like that. Just fun to be around. So uh, they're out there. But uh, but I do see what you mean. I mean, a lot of the uh, like hardcore this faction or that faction or just have sworn off women. But I under I but at the same time in the same sense I understand their points based on where they're at. I mean a lot of them don't have, you know, like the the time or the energy or the the social mastery like yourself or that I do to go out there and just like walk up to some drop dead gorgeous chick and be like, hey, you, you know, a lot of guys don't have that. But uh, that's why we teach this stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's like definitely extremes and it almost like makes me wonder. 
uh, as an intellectual exercise, is it worse to be that like super simp who's like buying girls, you know, spending all your money on a random chick who's not going to fuck you, but at least you have like that hope maybe versus right. being the really bitter guy who's completely stopped, cut off women, right? And decide that women are not worth it because they'll fuck you over. Like which guy is it better to be? Because I would argue that they're both bad, but maybe it's even better to be that simp, right? Because yeah. then you're hopeful. I don't know. I mean, obviously it's best to be somewhere in the middle where, you know, right. you're not retard, but you're also not like forcing yourself to become a monk. But I think uh, Einstein said it best. Einstein said something like the death of a man is the death of his imagination. So the second that you can't even have your enjoy your imagination anymore and you're like, nope, they're all they're all out to get you and it, they're all bitches and all this, then, you know, you're no longer enjoying life. So, I mean, I, I agree with you, like as far as the extremes goes. Um, but I have a lot. I mean, my content mostly I get everybody, which is great. It's like I got guys who are MGTOW. I got guys who are red pill. I even have a few black pill guys like follow me and follow my work and they subscribe and they comment all the time. And, uh, you know, a good number of them, even the ones who are red pill are still dating. They're still out there. They're still cold approaching. They're in my pickup program. So they're clearly still doing it. Uh, but uh, but, uh, you know, and they haven't given up hope. And I tell them, like, yeah, you need to keep your imagination open. Even if you, you think women are like this, just you need to enjoy them because that's why we're both put on here, like both male yeah. and female. We're both here to, like, interact with each other. And I think you have to be aware of your biases. Like, I try to be very aware of any bias I might have because, okay, my – like, a lot of things that guys say, oh, this is the truth. Well, there's no there's, – there hasn't been any studies done on it. It's not, like, scientific. It's just the culmination of your personal experiences. Like, oh, it's the truth. Women are this. Okay, but could you – could it be maybe that those are the women that you've met and maybe there's other types of women that you haven't met and thus your opinion is biased? So I do think you have to be able to, like – question your assumptions which is why it's important not to identify with a tribe and keep an open mind and i'm always like evaluating like my assumptions as i go on through life like okay maybe this one thing that i believe isn't really true it's just been my experience so far so i think that's key but uh speaking of your content so a few things i want to just quickly bring up uh i want to see what your thoughts are so you have one video <laughs> pretty uh pretty uh, catchy title uh women don't care about you so can you can you elaborate on that like what exactly does that mean at the end of the day, I, I mean, I uploaded that like two years ago. So um, I'm trying to think because I had one. That's probably one of my more popular ones, right? That's that's your most popular. I literally just went through your channel. Oh, most popular. Most popular. Yeah. That's okay. your number one video. I put women don't love you. But uh, yeah, what I, I'm trying to put my head back in that space because I don't want to like say something and guys watch it and it contradicts. But uh, uh, basically what I was saying in that video is that women – don't care about you or the reasons you think they do like most blue pill guys tend to think they do like she cares about me because i'm special i'm esoteric i'm a painter and all this and it's like mm. no really cares about what you're bringing to the table and what value you're adding to her life how you make her feel the emotions the emotional roller coaster you can take her on that is what she cares about it's not quote unquote the the uh the prototypical definition of like the Disney definition of that. She cares about you. And, you know, right. which I actually agree with that's, that's funny. Cause you know, when I watched that video, my assumption was like, dear God, like, what is this guy on? But like, when you, when the, what you're saying now, I, I agree with more or less like, yeah, women usually, yeah, they, they care about, you know, how you make them feel rather than, you know, just you who you are as a human being. I mean, as she grows to love you, that changes, but initially, yeah, of course it's about the emotions and like, how you make her feel when she's with you, and then it can evolve from there. Um, okay, interesting. So that's what I that video, yeah. Now that I think back on it, that's I think that's exactly what I said too. And that's just based uh, no, off, cold, yeah. That's just based off cold, like cold approach. So right, right, right. Another video. So okay, uh, you mentioned guys who don't care about girls, body counts, or simps. Yeah. So what's uh, what is it? What does that mean per se? So. Uh, so there was a video that one of my subscribers sent me and he really wanted me to comment it. And for the longest time, I, I tried to avoid doing any kind of like reaction videos, but mm -hmm. after a while I'm like, ah, that would probably be fun. So I'm kind yeah, of- Yeah, I've been getting that into them recently as well. They're pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of yeah. fun. Um, yeah. um, I mean, I'm not attacking anyone in particular yeah, yeah. or calling anyone out by name, like this guy, Paul Miller or whoever, you know, I don't do that. I'm like, oh, I this is why I disagree. And I, I never say like, it's only this guy. It's 
a wider range of people who feel this way. That's why I feel like I need to respond to it, but or react. But uh, he basically uh, in that video he was saying that uh, it was like a couple of weeks ago he said that he doesn't care about girls' body counts. He doesn't ask. That was a point that I want to make. He said he doesn't ask and he doesn't care. And it's like from my from my point of view, that's a little well, not a little, but a lot. That's pretty irresponsible because the more guys she slept with, especially if she's had unprotected sex with him, the more chance she has to be carrying an STD, the more chance that she could give that STD to you, especially if you don't have anything. I mean, you know, knock on wood, I, you know, I've been with a lot of women and I have not, I have not gotten anything and I've gotten tested uh, recently. Oh, dude, how is that even possible? I don't even know. Well, you know, I'm, I shouldn't even admit this, but like at at one point, like in the early 2000s, I think I caught the clap like twice, but okay, the clap yeah. is pretty easily solved. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's literally me. I've had chlamydia twice. Yeah, see? Yeah, so it's like an antibiotic, um, but there's some more severe ones. And, uh, and it's to the point these days where I even teach students to do this, like ask the girl, even during the approach, like if it's going well and you feel comfortable, I mean, I will literally ask the girl, like if, if I feel like it's going somewhere, I'll say, hey girl, Quick question: Have you ever had an STD? I'll ask it playfully if that's the vibe we, we're getting, we, we're you know we're dealing with, or I'll ask it serious if she's a more serious girl. And usually, I found that most women are actually pretty honest about it, and they'll be like, "Oh, I've never had one," or "Oh, I have you know I I have herpes." You know, I've, I've had girls literally tell me like, and not trying to get rid of me either. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. Is that is that a deal breaker? I'm like, yeah, that's a deal breaker. Sorry. You know, uh, one girl was like, I have HPV. I didn't even know what that was. And I had to like Google it. I'm like, shit, I could catch this from kissing you. I could go blind from this. You know, I'm like, uh, no. And she's like, no, it's fine. And she was, she, it seemed like the more I was like, nah, the more she was like, no, it's fine. It's fine. You you know, she's like, I had an ex-boyfriend. He never caught it. I'm like, eh. Well, I, um, honestly, HPV is not one I would ever worry about. Uh, HPV is like extremely benign. Extremely, because I know this because I know a lot of people have it. Um, yeah, that's yeah. not what I would worry. I, really, I, in my opinion, the two STDs that matter are, well, actually, the one STD that matters is HIV. You definitely don't want that because you're fucked. Uh, most of the world has HSV1, HSV2. Uh, a lot of people are born with it. Like, for example, my mom and dad, they both have, uh, and my, like they, almost my parents are both lying to me, but they, they both said that they were born with it. So, you know, you get through breastfeeding and what that. Uh, I was born with it in my blood. I've never had an outbreak in my life, but technically I have HSV. So um, I do think a lot of that is overblown in my opinion. I do think though that safe sex is important. So my kind of, the way I operate is if I'm going to start having unprotected sex with a girl at that point, I'll bring it up and I'll be like, Hey, listen, let's both get an STD test. And, you know, just yeah. to make sure that, you know, you don't have anything. I will say this, this may be an unpopular, unpolitically correct opinion, but I do think that you, the, like I said, the one STD that matters is HIV. You can really, really, really minimize your odds of getting that by not fucking with certain girls. What type of girls would you say? That like your hood rat right? girls. Yeah, 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 I would say the same. But um, but yeah, just to get, not to get too far off topic, but that's the biggest reason that, that why I asked a girl, like, you know, mm -hmm. I try to gauge because... A lot of girls will, lie. they'll be honest if they have an STD, but they'll lie about the number of guys that she slept mm -hmm. with in most cases, maybe not as much these days because it's becoming like a big deal for girls to talk about their body count. And it's like, um, I'll ask the girl point blank. I want to know because also too, uh, for the fact that a lot of guys who are learning from me now are looking for relationships or they're looking to uh, settle down and have a family and they want to have like a son and they want to have kids and all that. I mean, not really for me but that's what they want to do so um i always teach i always tell them they're i mean statistically if the girl has slept with 10 or more guys uh there's a 33 percent chance that she will be unable to pair bond and function in a normal healthy relationship so she's just not going to be wife good wife material um or good girlfriend material based on the odds like if somebody told me if i went to the roulette table there's a 33 percent chance more that I'd lose, then I'd just not go to that table. How did they determine that? Like, was there some kind of study performed or how's yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, there was a study of, uh, I think it was like at least a few thousand girls or a couple of thousand or something like that. But they uh, they did a study on this. And if you look at that video, it's somewhere buried on my 33 Secrets channel. I did link to the study. So I make sure I put the study in either the, the description or the top comment, which I always pin. 
uh, just because I'm going to have people who are like, where's the proof of this? And then I put the study like, okay, you could read the study yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So kind of my perspective on this is, so well, let me ask you this. So is, is the place is coming from primarily health? Like, is it mostly just like, you know, you're for like, like a health concern or is there more to it than that? Well, it's, it's a number of things. It's, uh, it's the health, um, it's the ability to pair bond. Like what if, what if I connect with this girl and I want to do something with her and she's, she's already damaged goods. I mean, cause like, well, she's damaged. And I'm like, I don't want to take a risk, you know, just going back to your point about time management, I don't want to involve myself with her, like just from an ROI perspective. And I have before I've done girls like that. I've had like girlfriends like that, where I wasted a good few years of my life. Like, ah, it's fine. She's so cool. We get along so well. It's fine. And then, of course, the relationship went to shit because I didn't take my own. I didn't listen to my gut, you know, and now there's actual statistical evidence on it. So it's the health. It's the inability of pair bond if we do start to work out. And uh, the third thing is um, uh, if she's if she's dated, well, like, you know, I mean, if she slept with dozens of guys, to me, she's a slut, you know, and I have no problem saying that to me. She's damaged. So mm -hmm. and I don't want to damaged female all right so this is, this is one topic where you and i would heavily disagree on yeah, so yeah. even at this point i don't even want to sleep with him i mean back in the day even then i i would just do it if she was hot but just because i've been in the game this long now it's like and uh whenever i get like my health checked and i'm still clean i i know i'm like my time i'm really really pushing my luck here I'm like so so push my luck because i haven't had any kids right like out of wedlock whereas a lot of these top pickup guys have um, they've, they've ended up like, in, like impregnating some like club girl or some chick that they didn't even want to be stuck with. And now they got to pay child support. I've never had that happen to me. I've, I'm not a single dad or anything like that. And I don't have any STDs. And so now I'm even more careful and I'm even more selective. And this is why I was joking earlier that even when I approach a girl, if she has a too much of a deep voice that I don't like, I, I just don't even go there because I know I could get somebody else with a feminine voice. And right yeah. now my dating rotation is full and I'm like, I'm not hurting for, for women right now. It's like, I have, I mean, I have an abundance right now. Not, you know, not to sound like preachy, but, uh, but I, I'm not going to have sex with somebody who's like, you know, slept with like 75 or hundred guys. No way. I mean, 50, 30. I mean, even that's like way too high for me. Usually if they're around like, you know, under that, you know, depending on how cool they are. But uh, yeah, there's a certain like threshold where I'm like, nah, chicks damaged. All right. So let me, let me uh, go through these one by one. Uh, so, okay. So uh, the health aspect, I do think health is important. I think you can just completely eliminate that risk by wearing condoms. And then if you, when you, when you are about to go raw, just, you know, get an SCD test. So I think at that point, it doesn't really matter that much. I would say that the parabound, I think there's more important indicators. I would need to look at that study. I haven't seen it. So uh, I, I don't know. I, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I would say that there's more better markers, whether the girl's uh, long term relationship worthy than her number of sexual partners. Like, for example, unless the only exception is if it's an outrageous number. So if she's fucked like 300 guys, then there probably is something there. Yeah. But unless it's like an outrageous number, like really outrageous, I think there's way better indicators than her lay count. That would be the second point I'm making. The third one in terms of the slut, uh, I mean, I just, I don't give a shit. Like to me, it's just, it just, because I know I'm a slut. So it's like, I'm not going to judge her for doing the same thing I am. Uh, that would be like very hypocritical of me. And her is for men, for women, okay, for women, they can sleep with whoever they want. It doesn't take any effort, any game. They, sure, I mean, I it, that. she could just walk into a bar and like have sex with anybody. We can't pull that off. We have to right. actually put work into it. It takes right, effort. Right. For a woman, there's no effort. So if she's sleeping around like that, you know, effortlessly, that's to me, that's why it's, there's that stigma. And a lot of girls are like, no, there shouldn't be a stigma. It's like, yeah, there is, girl, because you could have sex at will. We can't. We like we have to. We have to. But you know who can? Celebrities and rock stars. So, for example, celebrities and rock stars can pretty much do that. And they still usually fuck a lot of girls. So I do agree with that argument that there's like an element of like skill and game involved. But right. you, even if you take that out of the equation, sex can be very rewarding in of itself outside of the challenge. And, you know, sometimes that goes away. Like when I was in my 20s, the chase was much more important to me than it is now. But I do think that, like, I, I just I can't fault a girl for doing exactly what I'm doing, even if it's easier for her. 
Uh, you know, like, cause if I was famous, it would be even easier for me than it is for her. Uh, in terms of the, the final point I will make on this is that I think that this is like a pet peeve of mine. Cause a lot of girls, they will want to keep their lay count low because they know that if, you know, for example, that if that society will judge them and I've had this like many times, I'm about to hook up with the girl. She's like, I don't know. We should do this. I'm like, why? She's like, well, you know, like, I don't know. What if we like, you know, guys, my next boyfriend might judge me because I've had sex. You know, you're going to be number 10. And so I'm going to be in the double digits. And I was like, any guy who fucking judges you for fucking one more guy is not a guy you probably want to be with in the first place. So that's the argument I'll always make. It's like, at the end of the day, it's like, who gives a shit? Now, again, unless that number is outrageous. But, you know, again, we're all entitled to our personal preferences. Uh, I would say if the number is like 300, 400, then that would make me think why she's fucked so many guys. And it's probably because she does seek validation, which would make her less relationship worthy. But like 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, I don't give a fuck. Uh, you know, yeah. would you be, girls except with say 75 guys? With the seven, yeah, I mean, it really, it really wouldn't, uh, it would come down to more who she is and how loyal do I feel she is? How honest do I feel like she is? Do I feel like the vibe that I get from her rather than her exact body count? But if, again, it, her age would be a factor. Let's say she's 20. Uh, 75 is pretty high for a 20 year old. For a 30 year old, it's not that high. I mean, it's not that outrageously high. Yeah, it wouldn't, I, I do always ask the girl their body count simply because I'm curious. And I like hearing about their other sex stories and whatnot, but um, it doesn't face me at all because I know that I'm going to be one of the best that she's ever had. I mean, it may be egotistic belief, but I know that I'm going to be better than most of the guys she's fought, you know, in terms of sexually and emotionally and in terms of, you know, just who I am as a person. So I, I don't worry about my competition. Would you wife her up though? Would you settle down with her? Like say that you were getting along and she wanted to, I don't know if you're looking to get married one day, but yeah, if you wanted to. If I if I was inclined to get married, it would not take away from my likelihood of selling down with her. If she had 75 guys. Yeah. You don't think she would go for a 76? Again, that's what that's what I'm saying. The, the, I would look at more of the factors like, hey, is this chick honest? Can she be trusted? Do I feel like I can trust her? Can I trust her with all my money at this moment? Like all, all that stuff would play more. If she's fucked 75 guys in the past. Like, yeah, you know, I used to be a slut in college. I used to, you know, I used to fuck a lot of guys. And then I got older and I started working myself. I, you know, now I'm just more about having a relationship. That would be fine by me. Uh, if she was like, you know, if she's still trying to slut it up, then that's a different story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because for me personally, and I'm a, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a guy, so I don't have the same um, um, kind of like. Yeah, I don't have the same wiring as a female, obviously, as we don't have as men. But just because I've been doing pickup and game for so long and I've had a number, I mean, I've, you know, I mean, my number is pretty up there. So it, it could be a lot worse, but it's pretty up there. And it's to the point where I am thinking about like, shoot, could I actually just be with this one person in the future? And um, I mean, I believe I could do it, but it would take a lot of like effort and um, avoiding temptation at this point, just because I've just you know, in a way, like I've almost damaged myself by like just constantly just going out there and doing this. But uh, yeah, but the kind of like argument that I might give is that you've experienced a lot. So when you do choose to sell down, you don't have that versus the guy who's like been with one or two girls and then he, he sells down with a second girl. And then 10 years from now, his career takes off. He has more opportunities. He's like that curiosity picks up. He hasn't been with a big titty Latina. He hasn't been with a tall blonde versus if yeah, you've done yeah. that already that's not really going to force you to cheat. So yeah, I just, I feel like there's a threshold, even for men, there should be a, like a, I don't know the study on it, but there should be like, there's probably a threshold, but uh, there, you know, like most guys don't need to sleep with a hundred or plus women. If they're just looking to like settle down with that one partner, I mean, you know, just a good pool of like dating options and just whatever he needs to get out of the system, like get it out, but he doesn't need to like take it to like the limit of, you know, I would tell guys, you don't, you don't want to, you know, do what I did. <laughs> you know, I don't know like, about that. I would, I have like no, I fucked hundreds of, you know, probably 300, 400. I have like no regrets about that. I would say that it, there can be different things at different points in your life. So when you're in your twenties, casual sex might be your main goal. Like you just want to fuck as everything possible. You enter your thirties and forties, you want to sell down, be in a relationship. Right. So yeah. I think that can change. Like when I was in my early twenties, I didn't care about, uh, let's say, you know, investing or, finance like every month all the money i had i would just blow on partying and shit 
now that I'm older, I care more about investing and saving my money and stuff like that. So I do think that your priorities can't shift. And I don't know if there's a right or wrong, just right at this point in your life. Yeah, yeah. What is your ultimate goal with like? You know, as far as that goes, are you looking to have a family one day or are you just looking to just keep gaming? It's so open ended. I don't I, I haven't decided yet. I don't know if I'm uh, I don't know if I want to be an exclusive monogamous relationship. Like at this point, me being an open relationship is like what works for me. It's good. Um, I don't know. You know, I don't know where I'm going to be in 10 years, uh, like mentally. Once, you know, like my mind sh- shifts. It, it, I'm open. I'm not completely closed off to the idea of settling down, having kids. I'm not like some guys just completely close it off. It's not. It's not like a. It's not a dead end for me. But it's not something I'm striving for at this point in life. Like right now, my main focus is the business. So I want to like you know take playing with fire to the next level, and like really blow out this company. So that's my main focus. I'm also like you know, you know, I have my girl. I'm also hooking up with chicks here and there. So that's kind of what's working for me. But what I one thing I do do think is kind of sad is when guys have made no progress like they've been doing the same thing for like debt for like let's say five years and they're still doing the same thing so I, whatever i'm doing i want to keep leveling up at it rather than doing the same thing over and over okay yeah yeah you should yeah um all right yeah i think we uh there's <laughs> definitely a, a good debate no it's pretty interesting because like watching your videos i definitely got the vibe that you and i would disagree on a lot of shit but like when we actually had this conversation, I feel like we disagree on some things, but I don't know. You're more, uh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe you've changed in the last two years since that video came out, but you're more like centered and, uh, I don't know, yeah. open. Do, 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 you, do you kind of see what I'm talking about or? Yeah. I mean, you know, it just, de- it also depends where my mood is at the moment that I shoot a coaching video. So a lot of times um, I will go like, you know how some YouTubers like set up a YouTube studio and they shoot, um, I'm, I, yeah, I didn't, I've never really done that. I've just kind of like, when I feel like shooting, I just, I just turn on the camera and I just start shooting. And, um, so at that moment when I shot that video, uh, that's how I was feeling. But, uh, I mean, normally I'm pretty, I'm pretty centered. I mean, I'm, I mean, again, I'm not even like politically, I'm not conservative or yeah. liberal or Republican or Democrat. I'm always like kind of in the middle. I, I believe in balance of everything. So yeah. Um, and obviously, I mean, I've been doing pickup and game, so it's like, I'm still out there approaching women regardless, you know, because I had a lot of people call me out in that video, like, ah, you know, hate women, you know, and all this other stuff. I'm like, okay, why am I dating so many of them? Why do I approach them? Why do I teach guys to do it? So clearly. Yeah. I mean, that's something that even I get accused of. Sometimes I occasionally get accused of, you know, oh, you hate women. How many of my videos have you seen? None. But, you know, right. from the title and the thumbnail, I assume you hate women. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's definitely weird things. You got like 20, 30 minutes to answer some Q and A. We got a bunch of questions. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's do it. Uh, all right, this chat has been just bumping. Uh, I'm glad there's. <laughs> I saw I was definitely pimping it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. A lot of black pillars choose that path to avoid putting in the work. I kind of agree with that. Uh, I think a lot of them. I think the. This is this is my theory. I think that the uh, the pickup and the red pill community, no, not the red pill, the pickup community, really did a disservice to the black pill community by saying that looks don't matter. And I think that's not a fair thing to say because looks do matter. And a lot of the guys who are ugly, they just got frustrated with like, oh, looks, uh, looks do matter. And but then they took it to the next level and they said looks are all that matters. So I think anytime you go too far in one direction, you have like that pushback. But as far as like being stuck on an ideology, like beyond the red pill, blue pill, I, the black pill guys are really, really like hardcore on their uh, on their ideas, which is fine. I mean, that's the way that they feel. And I, I totally get that. I totally understand it. But yeah, they sometimes they take it too far. Yeah, 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 for sure. All right, let's see. Uh, a lot of like comments, but I want to get to some questions. Yeah, so if you got some questions, just post them below. Uh, <laughs> how much are CD tests and where to get them? they are not that expensive. If you have health insurance, even if you don't, you can go on uh, walkinlab.com or there's a bunch of online websites. It should be like 150 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, someone said free in a health clinic. Uh, the only problem in uh, in America, the free health clinics are so fucking bad in terms of like you'll have to wait for two hours. So I'd rather personally spend 100 bucks rather than wait on like uh, Yeah. It's like usually in a really shitty part of town too. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's one in Miami where it's like, <laughs> uh, when I first moved to Miami, back when I didn't really have much money, also I didn't have health insurance. It's in, uh, it's called Out of the Closet. It's like some gay store. And then the back of that store, they have like a, like a free clinic. And I'm just like sitting there and there's all these like gay guys like shopping around, like <laughs> eyeing me. And I'm just like, oh God, like fucking A, like I just want to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah, um, all you got to get an allergy test too and see what foods you're allergic to. Um, okay. <laughs> What's a good age to put one in the oven? I guess he means to have a kid. When you're ready, financially, mentally, spiritually. For some guys, they're ready in their, you know, in their late twenties or mid twenties, and some guys it takes them, you know, to their thirties or forties to mature. So when you're mature enough to have one, don't have one too early and don't weigh your life down. Yeah, I agree with that. I like this one. Okay, leave this wimp, Matt. He's obviously a feminist. Yeah, because clearly I'm a feminist because you know me on Playing With Fire. We only talk about feminist ideals. Yeah, good one, Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Actually, a woman can ch only choose from the men that are choosing her. Some men actually have more options. A woman is rarely going to make the initial approach. That's definitely true to some extent. Seduction psychologist. Um, that being said women nowadays are being uh, being approached a lot especially if they're attractive and that can be on instagram on dating apps so the girl her options are pretty big unless she's like a you know isolationist or whatever so oh, when, we're, when we were talking about earlier how the game has changed i neglected to mention that was that uh, back in the day girls didn't really realize what their value was because we are all kind of like there was no social media to tell them that they didn't have thousands of beta orbiters on their IG, like liking all their photos and whatnot. And now it's to the point where a lot of these girls who would otherwise be fours are acting like nines. That's why we have that term 49er. Uh, so that's that's kind of like throwing a monkey wrench in the game. A lot of girls think that their value is much higher than it is because they have a bunch of like simps and beta orbiters, you know, liking all their photos and pumping up their egos on uh, on social media and giving them validation. Whereas back in the day, they didn't have that. So a lot of girls were just basing their value on like guys that check them out, like they're walking around or if they go out with their friends, there wasn't social media back then to really just pump up their, you know, pump up their, uh, what they think their social value is. I mean, to the point where now you've got girls who are like fours or like fives, barely sixes, expecting like model looking men and expecting men to like overpay for them, you know, yeah. not, financially but like overpay with their value like right. i did the nine or ten because i get guys on my you know on my dms like messaging me like no girl you know in reality you're still a four yeah that that is that is unfortunately true um i do find that yeah that is that's kind of a plague it's it's not really that much in other countries it's mostly in like america and maybe canada uh less or so in other countries uh but yeah that that is that is an issue her sense of value is artificially inflated due to uh the tension but the the good girls are the ones who the good women are the ones who are self-aware of that and they don't let a bunch of dms affect their ego yeah. you know what i mean like, so those are those are the girls who you probably want to be with long term are the ones who yeah you know i'm hot to get a lot of dms but that doesn't mean that i'm perfect it doesn't mean that you know um, my shit don't stink. It just means that there's a lot of horny guys out there who want to fuck me based on the picture. Which, but then but a lot of women don't have the self awareness to make that distinction. So they let it yeah. go to their head, and they're like, "Oh, I'm perfect. I don't need to work on myself. I can be a slob. Like it doesn't matter." Yeah. So that, yeah. That's and they're, they're usually, I mean, talk about red flags. That's usually a red flag if the girl is has like thousands of followers, but she doesn't really have a business tied to that. She's just uploading selfies of herself. Um, because there are a number of women out there who don't, aren't even on social media, like the 19 year old chick I'm seeing right now. She doesn't even have an Instagram. She hasn't law. I mean, she doesn't even have a Facebook. So it's like she doesn't even do social media. But um, those those are the ones you want to find. Um, yeah, there, there's some element of truth to that. I would say. Um, it, yeah, I mean, if a girl if a girl's too too into social media, that would be a red flag for me. So I would agree with that. Like if she's constantly uploading shit and constantly on her Instagram, that is a red flag. You don't want your girl uploading like bikini shots of herself like daily. That's a red flag. Yeah, if it's like daily, that is a red flag. And once in a blue moon, I don't give a shit. But uh, if it's daily, because it, it, it less has to do with 
the action and more why she's doing it. Like if she's uploading bikini pics regularly, it's because she is really validation seeking. That's why she's doing it, right? So if she's validation seeking, well, that's not just, that's not a good trait to have in a woman because she's gonna be looking for that validation outside of your relationship. So and really, you want a girl who doesn't need validation at all. Like she feels she has high self esteem. So yeah, that is an issue. Um, let's take this. A man can a man that can be a slut isn't a slut. He's successful, fertile. On the other hand, women were designed to have a bunch of sex with one guy. When they become players, they get anxiety for life. Uh, some elements of truth to that. There are biological differences, and we are just like you know. For us, let's take the mating process. For man, you just come, and that's really all you have to do. Like if you think about it, like yeah, obviously in society, like nowadays there's child support, but you know back in caveman times, all you had to do was just fucking come inside of her and that's it that's you're done with you know your role which she has to carry that child for nine months at the very least so there there's some biological differences but i would make the argument that just because we have certain things that we evolved doesn't mean that they need to play out meaning like biologically we were we evolved to like fucking not live past 30 right like you know like we weren't designed to live these long lives that we have now uh, but we do. So there's like, just because something was the case 10,000 years ago, I think, I don't know, like a problem I see sometimes is people like, okay, we were biologically involved to do this, thus we must do that. But you have free reign. Like we're evolved to be fairly violent and defensive. Like, you know, we used to kill each other a lot back in the day. We don't need to do that anymore. So yeah. that's not really a great argument for me. Uh, when they become players, they get anxiety for life. Um, I yeah, I mean, I haven't seen anything that suggests that. But yes, yeah, so. when women become players, yeah, yeah, they get they get anxiety for life. Okay, I thought he was talking about guys for a second, but um, yeah, I I don't know why a woman would want to be a player. But I mean, she doesn't even have to be a player because again, it doesn't really take effort for her. Like most women who are decently attractive, if they are to approach a guy, I mean, and ask for the guy's number, like 99.9% .9 of the time, the guy's going to do it because he's just going to be like so blown away that this cute chick's approaching him. But uh, yeah, it, it doesn't work that way for men. We got to actually put in the work. Yeah, you know, you know, it's actually funny. A lot of guys don't realize this. So a lot of guys think that women have it so easy and that, and in some ways they do. It is yeah. very easy for women to get laid. But women yeah. definitely have their fair share of uh, issues when it comes to dating. And sometimes there's a lot of women who think men have it so easy. Like there's a lot of that. So it's funny how both sides think that the other side has it really easy when in reality, we just have different challenges. For men, it can be a challenge just to get laid in the first place and be social. For women, it's a challenge to find a guy that she can be happy with, right? So Yeah, yeah. yeah I was just going to make that point. Like women uh, are the gatekeepers of sex, but men are the gatekeepers to the relationships. relationships. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a lot of these girls ain't loyal, never wife a thought or a party girl. I would agree with that. Uh, you definitely want to be very selective about who you date or who you marry, especially. So I would definitely agree with that. Uh, yeah. That's why you got to filter them out, man. You know, you got to filter them out, like finding a needle in a haystack. If you want to find a good girl, especially these days. But uh, they are out there. It's just personal preference. I agree with that. Uh, it is personal preference. Nothing wrong with Alex's view, but there's something that feels really right about being with a low count girl. I actually don't feel that way because I find that a super low count girl is going to be very inexperienced and probably bad in bed. This is why I personally don't enjoy fucking virgins. So I will typically, you know, if a girl says she's a virgin, it's a turn off for me. Uh, but yeah, I mean, again, I do think that once the late count gets like too high, there's wow. usually a reason why. It is that way. And unless she has, I don't know, like she's conscious of what that reason was. Like, for example, a girl could be like, yeah, you know, when I was in my 20s, I had really low self-esteem because, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I fucked a lot of guys. And then I did therapy in my 30s and now have higher self-esteem. I still enjoy sex. But, you know, I don't feel the need to fuck everything that moves in order to get validation. Okay. That's like, that makes sense. Versus if a girl's like, I don't know, I'm just, uh, that's like a different story. So would you rather have a high count girl over a low count girl? Dude, it really like I uh, guys are probably gonna think I'm making this up. It really makes no difference to me unless the late count's outrageously high. What's outrageously high for you? Several hundred. How about one hundred? 
you're, you're kind of getting there. Like it's, uh, again, it's a nuanced thing. Like, okay, well, what about 101? What about 102? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of getting in that territory. And again, it depends on her age. 21? Yeah, that's probably outrageously high. 31? Eh, okay, it depends. What was, what did she do? Uh, okay, maybe if she was in a relationship for eight years and still outrageously high because eight years she was taken. So I, again, it's just more nuanced than that. It just depends on a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Think about a virgin though, even though they're inexperienced and a lot of them are like pretty retarded too. Uh, like it's funny when you approach a virgin, you, you can kind of tell cause they're just really like, they're really, um, like open to talking to you and even being touchy feely and even making out, but they won't let you go there. But, uh, yeah, when it comes to virgins, um, it's actually true. Yeah, I agree with that. I'll never forget you. Yeah, yeah, to some extent. I mean, I've I've hooked up with a few virgins. Uh, the sex was terrible though, but other than that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but sometimes they get too clingy afterwards. Like virgins aren't good if you just want to have like a one night stand or whatever. Because a lot of them, they just get very clingy, and then you like feel bad, like. I I don't want, I don't want, unless the girl is fully cool with it, I don't want to be the guy that takes her virginity and then never hits yeah, her up. Guy. It's better to let her just find uh, somebody who's like uh, kind of on her level. Yeah. How does marriage benefit the guy? That's actually a good question. What are your thoughts on this? Um, modern day marriage, uh, in most situations, it doesn't. Um, I mean, it, you know, it really depends on your partner. If you have like a really traditional conservative type, woman who wants to be like uh like the june cleaver type housewife and wants to support you and have your back and um you know is going to praise you and respect you and everything like that then it will benefit you in that way because you'll have like a teammate who has your back but most women these days who are being brainwashed with like feminism and i don't need a man and this and that who are still getting married by the way uh, i i feel horrible i feel bad for their husbands because their husbands are kind of like getting scammed they're getting this woman who is not gonna it's like most most modern women today i a quote unquote modern women they want to be they want the title of wife but they don't want to act like a wife just like most modern women want the title of girlfriend i want to be your girlfriend but they don't want to act like girl, girlfriend they still want to go to the clubs and party and you know and do things behind your back and it's like okay you're not my girlfriend you're just some chick that i'm randomly dating it's like no I want, i'm your girlfriend it's like no act like my girlfriend if you want to be that so, right. but as far as like marriage, I mean, all the laws are against guys right now. Um, I mean, yeah, it's a pretty sticky situation. I mean, I have guys in my programs who still want to get married, and I tell them just have a private ceremony. Uh -huh. Don't involve the government in your marriage. I mean, Dude, I, I ever, totally agree with that, hundred percent. Yeah, if I ever go down that path, I'll uh, probably just have a private ceremony and uh, probably just hire. A priest. I really see no benefit in involving the government. Like, how does that help you in any way? It doesn't. Yeah. You're just why, why the government shouldn't even be involved in your marriage. Like that shouldn't even be, yeah, they shouldn't be involved. I don't know why they're involved to begin with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would agree with that. I really don't think I agree. I don't think marriage really benefits the guy much nowadays. Uh, and it's not like it makes the girl less likely to leave you. I disagree with that. I married no. most marriages and divorced. So it's not like you're tying her down or something like that. And even if you have to tie her down with something artificial like that, that is probably not going to work out anyway. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I mean, but a lot of guys want to take that route. So I, I try not to, you know, do, I mean, you can't change their, their minds if that's what they want to do. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just, uh, have a private ceremony. Don't involve the government. You got to go like, uh, Anakin Skywalker style when he, uh, was it pack of the clones when he got married, they just had a little private ceremony. Nobody, you know, the government wasn't involved. Nobody needs yeah. to know. And I would definitely get a prenup nowadays. Oh yeah, you got to spend at least five k for a good prenup, guys. So if you really, if you have, if you have, if you have assets, or if you think you're going to go somewhere in life, then yeah, get a prenup. Yeah, unless unless she's like a celebrity and you know she has way more money than you, then <laughs> Kevin better one. <laughs> what if a girl has someone's name in her bio and became that she's dating with someone, but possibly wants to hook up? Depends on what you want. If you want to just smash, like me personally, if I'm just want to get laid, I wouldn't give a fuck. But if I'm trying to date her, no, that would be a deal breaker, obviously. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if, if she's just dating somebody, I, I don't really care about that. But, uh, if she's like married, especially if she has kids, I don't go there. It's just it's too messy. I don't want to deal with it. Um, yeah, I've had like, I've had like husbands call me in the middle of the night before and yeah, it's insane. It's like, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I've only had that happen like a handful of times. 
Yeah, I've had yeah, like a husband. I had a husband call me and he was like practically crying and all this, and I'm like, I just felt horrible. I'm like, oh I, shit, that's even worse if he's like crying rather than he's yeah. pissed at you. It's not even worth it, man. Yeah, but if she's just dating, it's boyfriend like just like casual dating or boyfriend girlfriend. I mean, most of those relationships don't really go anywhere. Um, you know, the guy is just trying to hold her there, and he he has no intention of doing anything with her. Then to me, that's open season. It really just comes down to your like own ethics and morals and values or whatever. Like me personally, I really don't give a shit per se, uh, but I will. I won't seek it out. I, I'll like if it really falls on my lap, then I'll go for it. But I'm like, I won't actively like try to pursue that. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like it'll have to like really fall on my lap. High value man wouldn't take a woman seriously if he slept with more than ten dudes spoken by someone who's probably not a high value man or hasn't slept with 10 girls moving on what percentage of alex's lace came from cold approach probably like 20 25 percent probably less than 25 percent i think the last the last guy's question was uh he was basing it off my article that i did on the uh the 33 uh 33 more likely for a relationship to fail after 10. so yeah that's usually becomes like the measuring point these days I wonder if Alex has been with low count girls. I have many times. The girl I'm seeing right now actually has a pretty low body count. Uh, definitely have. Most of the girls who I date are less than 20, I would say. I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, one of the, my first girlfriend ever, and I feel bad like putting their business out there, but I won't tell the name. My first girlfriend ever probably had like a body count of 25. The next one was like less than 15. Uh, third one was also less than 15. Current one less than 10. So yeah, most of the girls I date are lower body count. Um, I mean, maybe there's something there, but again, it would just, I don't know. I find that actually another thing that I've noticed is I do think the red pill community exaggerates the average girl's lay count. I do think there's a small sub, sub, subsect of girls that fuck a lot of guys. But I think most girls, they don't really have that high of a lay count. Most girls are like 10, 20, whatever. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, most girls are that I've found are yeah, pretty much like under 20. I don't, or even under 15. I don't, I haven't met too many girls that are over that. Yeah. All right. Let's take like one or two more questions. Sure. How would you reply to a girl that you're gaming that you call a name like baby and she replies that she's not a fan of being called baby? Well, you don't do it, I guess. I mean, how do you reply to a girl you're gaming that you call? Yeah. I mean, I would just not do it. I mean, you know, some chicks just don't like certain things. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think you should like really push for it or anything. Like, I'm I'm a big fan of girls calling me daddy, but some chicks are just not into that, so I don't really push for it. Yeah, unless you want to use it as a neg or something like that, if it's something that you could use in your game to be playful and get her to uh, react. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, what's the average rating of girls in Miami versus LA? I think we both have really hot girls in our respective cities. Both, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're both. I mean, they're. I've been in Miami. Yeah, they're pretty hot there. I mean, they're just as hot as in LA. The thing with LA girls, I will say this: is you get, you just get this LA attitude that I there's like this Hollywood type LA attitude type girl that is just so putting off. And yeah, it's really annoying. It, I mean, it's to the point where I just bounce on those girls. Like, even if I have them and I, I've done a pretty good cold approach, and they're like, "Oh, are we going across the street for pizza from the venue?" I'm like, "No, nah, I'm going home." I literally, I'm like, I don't even want like sit there and waste an hour like hearing about your bullshit auditions or your modeling gigs i just don't care because i think you're a terrible person yeah 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 uh i think both of our cities attract a fair share of uh i would say i think the girls in la are worse uh <laughs> but they're, but they're the, the problem with la is uh, of course the you know the, um, the entertainment industry so a lot of like actresses and that, that just whole industry is fucked actually quick side story one of my really good friends growing up uh, you know, we went to university together in Boston, uh, really good guy. And he moved to LA after I was already living there to become an actor. And he's still a good guy, but I watched LA like fuck him up. He's like this nice, uh, well, let's say like, whatever, he's nice Hawaiian guy, whatever kid. And I just watched LA just like slowly corrupt him a little bit. Uh, if you're watching this, I still love you, man. But yeah, I do think like LA can influence people and yeah. it definitely influenced me. Like I think it made me more jaded for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, one of my uh, one of my main wings that I had in LA, who actually moved from Kansas to LA to game with me, and he was a really good wing. He was really phenomenal at pickup. 
um, like all of these like LA girls got to him and one day he just turned black pill. I, I not even kidding. He just turned black pill on me and he just like totally started, started turning and like, Oh, you know, why even bother with the pickup and stuff? And I'm like, and this guy was not bad looking. He did phenomenal. I, I mean, just based on his results, but yet he was like, no, it's all about the looks. It's all about this. And I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? You did well. You know, and then he got like obsessed about, oh, my nose has, to, I'm going to get this nose <laughs> and I'm going to get this facial structure. And I'm like, what? You know, I was like, dude, you're, go back to Kansas, man. I'm like, LA has gotten to you. I'm like, you got to, you got to get out of here. So, yeah, I, I agree. LA can eat you alive if you let it, if you let the environment just take over. Dude, one time in LA, I had five flakes in one day. I literally set up five dates in one day. I was like, this is going to be a day full of banging. I'm going to need some Viagra and shit. I'm going to be just banging girls all day. Every single one of them flaked. That's like my all-time record, five flakes in one day. I was like, how is this even possible? Dude, it is the flake capital of the world. I mean, the they're capital of the world. I mean, you could be like a producer offering a girl a job. She'll flake on you. You know, I mean, it's yeah. it's pathetic. But uh, the, the one thing I will say about L.A. is like if you want to find cooler girls in L.A., like those type SoCal girls, go to Orange County, uh, go by the beach community. That's where usually I like to go yeah. and hang out with the game, like Laguna Beach, Newport um just out there the, the girls are so much cooler and uh they're not all dolled up with makeup and they're more like traditional more conservative and uh yeah i just love that area my 19 year old girl, girl lives out there so i'm out there a lot one thing i do like about la is like the um the entrepreneurial culture like everyone in la is like hustling like everyone's got like multiple businesses multiple oh. gigs so like Everyone's really, and I didn't really realize this until I moved to Miami. Miami people are more just like fucking around, like yeah, you know, just you no, know, just. Well, in LA, everyone's like entrepreneurial and got multiple businesses, and like shit is just happening. That's the thing I love about LA. People are like, why do you leave LA? And I'm like, I just love the fast pace. It's like people are trying yeah. to get from point A to point B, and they're not like they're just moving. They're just moving. So if you want to be, you want to be hustling, LA is the place to do it. Just don't get involved with like the drugs, the party scene, the celebrity scene and all this other uh, garbage that goes on in Hollywood. Have you ever crossed paths with any uh, celebs, like in terms of like girls, like you being the same girl as oh like a celeb? God. Yeah, this one place in uh, that I go to in Santa Monica, it's called The Bungalow, where I yeah, do I games. Yeah, I go there pretty often, and actually RSD used to have boot camps there, mm -hmm. Todd Beach used to have boot camps there. Um, but I've been in there, and like Owen Benjamin was in there. Uh, there was a girl I was uh, like trying to game in there, and she was like, uh, the guy who was uh, trying to get her also was Terrell Owen. So obviously I lost that mm -hmm. battle. Terrell Owens like walks in and takes her. Um, Toby McGuire, he's been in there too. I mean, yeah, you see celebrities a lot out there and they're all pretty much doing the same thing. They're just like trying to uh, meet. Yeah. yeah. I, I went head to head with Peter Dante. Uh, do you know who that is from the Adam Sandler movies? Yeah. He, 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 oh. Peter, Peter Dante. Yeah. 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 Okay. I was, uh, it's pretty funny. I had a date. It was also in Santa Monica. It was at, uh, it was, it was like 10th and Wilshire, some like local dive bar right near where I live. And you know, my date was pretty hot. Like she was a uh, hot milf. I met, you know, walking around the beach, I uh, got her number, got her on a date. Um, definitely the hottest chick at the bar. And then Peter Dante, I guess he knew one of the owners. So he was behind the bar and he like comes in and he like comes in like, Hey, you guys need anything? And that's like, his like in, and then he just starts like macking on this chick. And he is uh -huh. funny because that guy is a comedian. So he's legitimately really funny. So he's being like a major dick to beat, but he's bouncing out with humor. So it's kind of funny. And then like I see myself losing the girl because she's like laughing and shit. I'm like, all right, all right, this has to end. So uh I like I had like a minute where he like looked over. I'm like, yo, I think he's like retarded or something. Cause he was kind of drunk. So she's like, Yeah, I don't know. He's, he is very aggressive. I'm like, let's get out of here before he like flips a shit. She's like, okay, and I just pulled her back to my place. Uh, but it was close call. Like, if, if he didn't need to look over or something, I don't know what it would have gone because that motherfucker is funny. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of that will happen. I remember one time I had a chick over who uh, she was telling me that, like, a few nights before. Oh, no, like, she, like, I was like, hey, so why couldn't you hang out last night? She's like, oh, you know, when we're Leonardo DiCaprio's house. I'm like, all right, yeah, I can't top that. Like, Leonardo DiCaprio's yeah. house is probably more fun than, you know, my shitty L.A. apartment. Yeah, it's so crazy because those are the stories that you hear like when you're living in LA. I don't even bother to talk about those on my channel because people will be like, no, that's, they wouldn't like, it wouldn't relate. And they'd be like, no, that's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to Joe's house or uh, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, my buddy of mine, like not that long ago, approached uh, Chloe Moretz from uh, 
he was in that movie Kick Ass, and uh, also like I think it was like one of Alec Baldwin's daughters or something pretty recently. So yeah, it's like the people you run into in LA is insane. Yeah, it's crazy. I remember one time I was uh, it was New Year's actually. I went to this porn party in the Valley. And uh, it was like, like, you know, like very low key porn stars, no one famous. And then Ron Jeremy walks in and I thought oh, it was really cool. I was like, this was way before he had all the legal problems or whatever. I was like, oh shit, Ron Jeremy's here. And I remember I was talking to a girl, I'm like, wow, I can't believe Ron Jeremy's here. She's like, oh, I wish he wasn't. I'm like, why? You know, this guy's a legend. She's like, uh, yeah, take a look at this. And apparently he was like bombarding her Instagram with like dick pics and trying to bang her. So I guess that. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess every girl in LA has been like DM by Ron Jeremy. He's like apparently a major hornball. And it was pretty funny because I trolled him after that. I came up to him like I'm like, hey Ron, what's up, man? He's like, oh hey, do I know you? Because he sounds like his very nasally voice. Hey, do I know you? I was like, yeah, man, I auditioned for one of your movies, but you said I have my dick is too small. He's like, oh shit, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Nate, are you fucking with me? I almost felt bad. I was like, yeah, I am, Ron. I'm sorry about that. So yeah. yeah really he used to hang out at a lot of clubs in Hollywood for some reason. I don't know, like whenever the clubs let out, he'd just be standing out there with a one of his like old like porn star buddies, and they'd just be hanging out there. But uh, yeah, 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 he's a character. Uh, but yeah, man. So if people want to find your channel and check out your content, where should they go? Go to the Thirty Three Secrets YouTube. Uh, you'll find me on the YouTube.com/slash the Thirty Three Secrets. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment on my videos. Um, I also have a second channel that most people don't know about. It's called Alpha Male Secrets, where I kind of teach a little bit more inner game and, you know, uh, more like male self-development. But you could subscribe to that one as well at youtube.com slash alpha male secrets. Um, so that's the best way to watch my content. And uh, if you want to follow me on IG, on Instagram, uh, follow me at Matt Cross Official. I'm trying to get to 10,000 uh, followers. So at Matt Cross Official on the IG. Yeah, check out Matt Cross. We'll link everything in the description below if you guys are watching this on repeat, so we'll have all the links in there. Thanks so much, man. I enjoyed this conversation. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Alex. I appreciate it. I had fun, man. It's a good debate, and good. Uh, we have a lot of commonalities, yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. we get a lot of value out of it. For sure, man. All right, bro. Talk to you later. Thank you guys for joining. we got some awesome videos coming out this week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel as well. Thank you.